in the name of Amara, the Divine Father, Mutnata, the Divine Mother, Kansu Karas, the Divine Child, and all of us together, the Neturu, the Divine People. I am Pharaoh Hekara, the Southern Ruler of the Nubian Sufi Empire, Gods and Goddesses, the UTBA, the United Theocracy of Black America, of Black Canada, of Black Mexico, of Black South America, of Black Europe, of Black Africa, of the Black Middle East, of the Black Virgin Islands, the Black Caribbeans, the entire Black planet Earth, the entire Black planet Mars, the entire Black planet Venus, and the entire Black planet Mercury, and all the other Black planets in this nine Black planet solar system under the Yellow Sun. To one and all, I say Hekhotep. Yeah, this has been a long time coming, family, because I got kind of thrown off uh, on a business trip. I went on a business trip in in the business trip you know i was told that uh i had that basically i was about i was i was going to get a nice little sum you know and there's no one that i know that ever leaves town on business to not come back with any money so some i was invited to a seminar I, I had did some live streaming so you was able to see that I was in Houston and you know a lot of times when I go out of town I let y'all know hey this was going on so people won't say oh, Esau's faking or he's not the real deal holy field I let you know live and direct that I'm on deck you know so if they say hey if I tell you that I'm going to Ukraine you know and I'm going to report what's on the, on the other side of the battlefield you better believe you're going to see me see your, your Ukrainian people behind me in the background. If I tell you that I'm going to be covering some footage in Paris, France, you know, better believe you're going to see the, the French flag behind me and one of the prime ministers giving a speech. So I'm a person, I, I don't know how real, I don't know how real I can get, I don't know how real I can get with you guys. You know, so I don't know how real you want it. But I'm going to say that i uh, I went on a business trip and you know everything was covered um transportation there um uh, hotel was covered uh you know ticket for the conference was covered and so in my plans my plans was basically i don't know why i got a little itch right there in my in my plans what well, basically how it was set up was I was going to do this conference and then whatever blessing I was going to get, uh, I was going to come back to St. Louis Monday, get back into my regular work week because until uh, someone says, hey, we want to be a $20,000 sponsor, we want to be a $100,000 sponsor, we want to be a, a two to three to four to five hundred thousand dollar sponsor for your for your movie production and your tour and all that good stuff. Until that comes about, hey, I'm going to go see what work I can do, right? I'm going to see what work I can do, whether it's dealing with uh, just a slight bit, a tiny bit of uh, work where I'm doing some restaurant work or, you know, or seeing if they need a, somebody need a driver to go do some things in regards to, uh, you know, clientele or whatever it may be i'm a working man right and even if i had even if i had three to four million dollars i would still be a working man why because i'd be working for my own business or making sure these these deals are being uh you know connecting with other uh business people around the world right so my goal was to come back and then also my sister had a birthday party on tuesday and I was gonna, you know, do the do the thing what I, I usually do, right? And then I was gonna study up for my my license to become a, a licensed insurance agent. So not only will I be able to benefit myself, but I will be able to benefit you all who want to insure not only your 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 uh, funeral costs, but how about ensure your life while you're still alive? Ensure your properties while you're still alive. You know, ensure your family. You know what I'm saying? So those are things that I was 
aiming toward and with whatever I receive we could flip that and go ahead and kick off the tour but when I but the three days of me uh being there there was some there was some I didn't detect that there was some it there was some wishy-washy issues in regards to uh my getting back now usually I, I book everything to a T and I usually have you know what I have but you know whether I want to say it was my fault but the case is everybody got to go home except me and I'm like hold up they take care of my arrangements getting back so I had to go through hell and hot water uh, just to get back to St. Louis and that is something that that is not going to happen again me dealing with any type of business and instead of the, the people who brought me down there doing the right thing, I said, you know what, we effed up. Everybody got a chance to head back to where they're going back to California or Florida or Texas. They didn't do the right thing, and they tried to pass the buck to me and pass the buck to my 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 family members who had nothing to do with the business deal. So I said, that is totally unprofessional because, see, whenever I say, hey, y'all, we getting ready to go to New York, right? And it could be about, it could be 10 people. And they all coming from different states, but they all up under my leadership. I'm going to make sure, even if, even if we out there for a week, I'm going to make sure everybody, even if it be the last dollar that's in my pocket to spend on these two people to get back home, I'm going to make sure that the money comes out so they can get back home. Because if you have some be some people, if you say, hey, you bring us somebody out of town, and you got to be responsible for getting them back. You don't just have people go out of town and you don't. And then when it, then you don't you not you don't want to take responsibility of getting them back, right? And so that's the situation I went through, and I had to wrangle with the company heads. But I had people that's you know tied into what I'm tied into. Said brother, if you would just gave a call, it would have been all good. But I didn't want to just give a call for it to be for you know I want to I wanted to press upon them the the the, the company that had me out there. And I want to press upon them that this is their responsibility. So even though people were, were trying to say, well, you 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 back in St. Louis and you can't get nothing. Nope, you know, there's there's been there's been more than a dozen times that I've made even billionaires come out their pockets. I said it's been more than enough time that I made billionaires come out their pockets, even for a little small money that they owe. Right? So uh yeah, I'm still going to be pursuing my uh, insurance license uh, through other connections that I have. But that company is going to be added to a list of three different or three different uh, state state owned uh, federal uh, state government owned uh, institutions as, as uh, along with uh, several uh, Fortune 500 companies. That are going to be up under my lawsuit. So we got about seven people that's going to be seven, not people, but entities. Because you want to hit the entity. You want to hit where it hurts. You want to hit the company for the negligence of those who work for us. So we got about NubianSufi.com. I said that NubianSufi.com is going to, we're going to, we're going to win about, I could say about seven lawsuits. One is dealing with the, with the uh, state of Missouri. One is dealing with the U.S. Army. That goes back to my father uh, in the 90s. One also dealing with, uh, you know, the feds. We got lawsuits for, for days. And everybody's going to bow down to, you're gonna, they're going to bow down to the law. And so this company just got added to those who, who are going to be sued by NubiaSufi.com. That's going to be sued by the Nubia Sufi Empire guys and goddesses. And we talking about, we're not talking about suing for a thousand dollars. We're talking about suing for a hundred thousand, hundred, a hundred million dollars. Some would say we're not talking about a thousand or a hundred thousand. We're talking about a hundred million dollars per lawsuit, right? I said a hundred million dollars per lawsuit, and this company just got added to the mix. So thank you for adding more money to the UTBA, All right? So that being said. There's going to be new things where we're dealing with businesses and, and, and individuals uh, that's going to be dealing with up upfront pay, contractual agreements, and things of that nature. And so we won't be going across, getting going going through this type of stuff. All right.
But yeah, I'm here in St. Louis, and we still gonna be heading back. We still gonna be going out. We still gonna be doing our thing. Uh, and and I did I did uh, enjoy for the most part to get to know the people of, of Houston, uh, Texas, because you had people there, and the people there were they had this entrepreneur spirit. You know, especially the Starbucks. You see a lot of young people coming there, and they got ideas. Uh, you would think just because Texas is considered South that you see a lot of the racism. I didn't see none of that, even though I was not long enough there long enough. But I saw, you know, whites, Latinos, blacks. I seen them from my point of view, basically. You know. You know, enjoying the prosperity that's in the state of Texas, right? A lot of prosperity that I've seen in, in the state of Texas. Of course, you got your hoods, you got your downtrodden areas. But once you once you come to think about it deeply, a lot of people want them. They a lot of people mentally want to stay hooded out. A lot of people want to mentally stay down and out, right? Until they receive a different programming, and that programming. Would, would, would basically help lift them out of the mud, right? But you're going to have to want to climb out the mud or you're going to stay in the mud, right, family? So I did, for the most part, enjoy being able to conversate and meet different people that was in Texas. We had people that were very helpful. Uh, I like, what's the hip-hop spots around here? You know, what's the what's the cultural spots around here? I had a Latino cat who's like, man, I'm... You know, uh, that's an African shop down here, you know, woo, 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 you know what I'm saying? And I was appreciating the dialogue. And, you know, uh, I can say that compared to when I was in Florida, when I went into the McDonald's in, in, in Texas, the, the same prices was, the same prices was, was that they have in Missouri was in Texas. But when I went to the one that was the McDonald's in Florida, it was like, Three or four dollars. They ain't had no dollar menu. So it was kind of funny that the prices were not high. The prices on the products in the state of Texas were the same type of prices for your milk and your bread, your cereal, were the same prices in Missouri. So they gave me a chance to really see how the money is being spent and the services they had and the people from my eye view. I'm not there right now. I don't know who's who's shooting down the street or who's doing this, but for my eye view and for my consensus of the the, the 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 week I was there, you know, the people were happy. The people were happy and my encounters with the police whenever you know, I hey, I, hey you know, so you talk to the police. Yeah, I talked to the police but I'm paying taxes, so the police really work for us. We got this, oh man, F the police, the police ain't nothing. You know, we said it in our youth because we know we was targeted, but on the same note, once you get an older man, you realize that the police work for you. You don't work for the police, right? You know, the, 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 the fire the fire the fire department works for you, right? All any civil servant, they work for you. So by them by me knowing that they work for me, I'm not all mm -hmm, I'm scared, I ain't gonna send them to them. Mm -hmm. I ain't I ain't I ain't got nothing on me. I, I'm not in the wrong. Hey, also, I need to know about uh, what 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 y'all do about anybody that's trying to, you know, this, you know, people that's out here that's trying to, you know, they end up somebody gets stranded and they need to get back. What's the resources that you go to? No problem. No shame in my game. So I did not see a lot of antagonism in Houston. Now I can't speak about about Dallas. San Antonio, I can't speak about none of that. I did go through, uh, what's the name of that town? Uh, Texarkana. Well, good, my good buddy, uh, uh, Buddha Ali. And I was like, Buddha Ali, I'm in Texarkana. Because I had to go to Texarkana. Because the way I, I, I went there, the way I came to Texas, and the way that I came back home from Texas, I was on the Amtrak. And that Amtrak, you can't believe how the Amtrak's, the Amtrak trains are cheaper than the Greyhound. How the hell are them Amtrak is going to be cheaper than the Greyhound? That's, that lets you know the, 
this pandemic then flipped everything upside down. You know what I'm saying? But when I was first going there from St. Louis, and when we enter in Texas, we had, you know, we, we got off at Texarkana. I wanted to kick it with Buddha Ali, but this is another issue where I, where I don't like going out of town on no trains, on no bus, not even on no planes. I would rather drive out of town. That's basically what my father used to do. My father was a military man. And the military say, okay, um, you know, they'll say his name. And they'll say, we need you to go to uh, Fort Benning, Georgia, right? We're going to put your family on a train or a plane. He said, no, 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 no. We'll drive from Arlington, Virginia to to uh, to Fort Benning or where it was, Fort Benning, Georgia, or wherever it was at. He would rather get everybody in the car, you know, go down to the, you know, we on the highway, I'm pointing at McDonald's. McDee's, McDonald's, McDee's, McDee's. You know, we, he pull right in the gas station and go get a big giant loaf of Wonder Bread. I'm, like, I'm, I'm crying because I already know what it's going to be. It's going to be a cold bologna sandwich with a fat giant pickle and some Miracle Whip mayonnaise. That's that's my McDonald's burger. I'm like, this ain't no McDonald's. Eat that, boy. <laughs> And, and my milkshake, my milkshake was a, just a cold pop soda. That was it. Like, like, like Eddie Murphy did on Raw. He said his mama bought, had that burger, and he had the 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 bread was melted on on the burger, and it looked the bread looked great. But like, this ain't a McDonald's. So my father. He 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 he, we, he would always get the the, the, the queen and the, the fam the children up, and we would go on a highway to this town or this. We would go on a highway. He wasn't about going and getting. He wanted to always make sure that he was mobile, and so that's that's one of the things uh, that you know you know what we, what we're looking for because even if we say okay, we we go out to uh went out to Houston right. But by me not having a car, it was it was so it was it was so little I can do. You know, even even when it's okay, convention is over with, right? The convention night is over. The next night, you know, you dealing with the Ubers and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? They can get expensive. But if, but if you go out of town and you and you rolling, that's the best way to go. That's the best way to go. So. It was like my father was like, you know, that's not the way I, that's not the way men in our family roll, son. So if you get jacked up in the game, that's on you. And so that's just a lesson to learn on that end. You know what I'm saying? To keep the chariot. The God's always rolling the chariots. So, you know, I'm, uh, I called the, I got back here. I kind of slept all day Thursday, then woke up and slept some more. <laughs> And kicking off this, 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 we're ready to kick off the work week, which is also going to be a film week as well. So we're going to merge the working into the filming apparatus. Because I don't have a lot of time here in the Midwest on the strength that I know once that snow hits, once that freezing element comes in, people ain't going to want to come outside. People are not going to want to come outside in, in, in Chicago and Detroit and and, and they're not going to want to come outside. It's just going to be too cold, you know? So now it's like, whatever I have to do, it's going to, whatever I have to do in regards to any filming or uh, anything of that nature, it's going to have to be like, like a couple of weeks and take everything else and relocate everything else where we're going to be in abundance of sun. And it was crazy when I was in Texas that it was it the weather felt like California. It was warm and everything. You know what I'm saying? I don't me. I, I don't know about anybody else. I don't like the cold weather. I was born in January, but I was, I guess I was that baby that that stuck the head out the womb. I'm like, uh, uh-uh, it's too it's too cold out here. I'm going back in. So I, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of cold weather. So I'm at a point now. I just want to go ahead and knock these rest of these scenes out. And then be like the Bergo hibernate, you know, with the Miss Mrs. Shakur and the 
and 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 the rest of the Shakur clan, we just get up out of the the uh, STL and go where it's gonna be warm for the rest of the year. You know what I'm saying? So that all that all involves in me as the man accelerating or exalting our the form of income, where instead of us looking at okay, I'm gonna make a hundred a few hundred few hundred dollars a week and whenever we stri strive to make only a few hundred dollars a week after we pay off whatever due we got to pay off whatever we pay off whatever rent or bills or whatever the car need fixing we seem to be broke and there's a cycle that wants to keep us in that continuance of we make about four or five hundred dollars a week but before we can even get our hands on the money we owe it it's gone right and that's the way to keep us in a state of perpetual slavery. Oh, yeah. Y'all said, who was my buddy when I... I had one buddy, my interdimensional buddy, Ganesha, was with me. And I had my stick. You know what I'm saying? So, this was keeping me company when I was out there in Texas, right? And the people, a lot of the people there were satisfied with whatever the 9 to 5. But I'm, as I'm beginning to understand how wealthy... We really are. That how wealthy that we really are and all, how, all the unnecessary struggle, all the unnecessary struggle that we all have, have to go through. And when I say we all, right, I'm saying everybody in the, in the, in, that's a citizen or considered or said to be a citizen of the United States. The unnecessary struggle that we all have to go through, the unnecessary financial struggle that we all have to go through because those powers that be are not informing us, they're not informing we the people on how wealthy we really are. Now, I didn't want to jump the gun on speaking about this and we would not be doing a formal declaration until around March right that I am running because we are running for we still got the, the 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 idea or the the goal for me to run a, a California Senate but because we we missed that time and it's already happening going into November that I'm going to have to wait but I just but I can run for Congress and then as I run for Congress I can come in for the Senate the Senate seat I can come in and and, and, and run for the Senate seat so we'll still be rocking and rolling right but my campaign will, will not be formally announced the Esau Shakur campaign will not be formally announced until uh, March. So all the things dealing with this, the, the ghetto rise of the Black Messiah mu uh, music tour, with all these conscious artists that I've been speaking with at the Legacy, that I've been speaking up at, at, at you know, Word Up and all these other places up there in, uh, in dealing with the Black Godfather St. Louis movie. Right? These these are instruments that are needed to be completed and fulfilled. Because as as we are completing these pro these projects, they could bring in millions of dollars of revenue, right? So by the time it's you know, they do um, in Washington and oh, in D.C. when they say, okay, anybody that's running for Congress or Senate or whatever they're running from, uh, running for, they can go ahead and make the announcements, but do they got a budget? So we're going to be already dealing with money, a multi-million dollar budget coming from the tour, a multi-million dollar budget deal, uh, coming from the, the Black Godfather St. Louis movie part one and part two, right? So when I get ready to run, I'm running with my own money. 
And by the time we get ready to announce my candidacy, my candidacy, I'm already going to be known through the music. I'm already going to be known through the movie productions. And while, and, and this is one of the reasons why I'm, I'm, I'm still free to do my sermons as of right now. But as we move into that, that, that time piece. All the time when I'm talking to different brothers and sisters, different men and women, especially black men and black women in the city of St. Louis or anywhere overseas, wherever, leading all the way up until the time when, it's, when I have to get all the way suit and, suit and tie, put my suit and tie up, you know, damn it, look like a bomber, right? We will already have different artists that I can have put out and they can, take, they can basically come in with that same fire as the Black Messiah that I kicked off, they would be coming out these different countries artists on the music, and then in regards to the movie production, it would already be black, black, black uh, filmmakers who will already be able to get their projects fully funded by what I put forth. So the so the the movie production won't stop, All right? And then in regards to the Nubian Sufi Empire gods and goddesses, we will already have brothers and sisters that I would say, look, I'm I'm not going to be giving the sermons anymore, right? Because I'm going to be, you know, on a, on a political campaign to get this office seat. You know, so I'm be out throughout the state of California. So they might even ask me to go to D.C. And so I'm not going to be able to preach where they're going to be able to use my preaching against me, right? So I'm going to have brothers and sisters, masters and priestesses, other Nubian Sufi Empire gods and goddesses to start doing what I'm doing right now. They're going to be the ones that's going to be on a live stream teaching. They're going to be the ones that's going to be on a podium teaching, going to the, to the universities and going to the and going to the to the to the churches and going to the mosque and the synagogues and and, and giving lectures and representing this on my behalf, right? They're going to be they're going to be giving the Nubian Sufi Gnostic sermons on my behalf. All right? Because it is highly important, highly in, 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 important that we who say that we are men and women of God, right? For we, especially us black men who say that we happen to be Rastafarians or we happen to be Hebrew Israelites, African Hebrew Israelites, or we happen to be in the more science temple of America, or we happen to be in the comedic schools of thought, or we happen to be Black Panthers, or we happen to be Pan-Africans. This is the most important, most critical time in history that it's time for us to evolve or to ascend out of just being strictly religious and we get back into the political. That we become the next political leaders. What I'm saying. I'm saying it is time that we the gods. It is time that we the gods. Run up for political office. It is time for we the gods. To be the next mayors. It is time for we the gods. To be the next governors. It is time for we the gods. To be the next congressmen. The next senators. It is time for us the gods. To be the next president. Because as long as demons are running the show, as long as beasts are running the show, as long as dragons are running the show, our society is going to always be a hell on earth. Our schools are always going to be a hell on earth. Our hospitals are always going to be a hell on earth. Our churches, mosques, and synagogues are all going to be hell on earth. Our households are going to be hell on earth. Our neighborhoods are going to be hell on earth. And our country, up under these ludicrous policies, are going to be hell on earth. 
So this is time. This is why it's time for us to give up. The my daddy is bigger than your daddy, right? One brother say, "I'm with Helen Selassie. No one else is important." Brother say, "I'm with Elijah Muhammad. Ain't no, no ain't no leader can touch him, right?" I, brother say, "I'm with Prophet Noble John Lee. Nobody can touch him." Yet the beast is devising policies to lock up all of our black asses and throw away the key. It is time that we stand up. Right? And break away the shackles of false promises that have been delivered to us by those who say they have our best interests at heart. A vision that I've seen. This is one of my first Sufi visions that I've seen. This is in the year 2000. Two years after I decided to embrace Sufism. Four years after I decided to embrace yoga practices. So, the vision I had in 2000, as I mentioned it to you a lot of times, a reporter was saying, today, I'm re reporting from the Pentagon or the Senate. It was one of those Pentagon or the Senate. It was a, it was a CNN type of broadcast or a C-SPAN type of broadcast I was looking at. But I was I was asleep. But while, while while these two eyes were asleep, this third eye was open. And I'm watching it. And they said they're making a decision on a new legislation. And as I was looking at the television screen, right? Not the physical television screen that you get up with the more control, but I'm talking about the television of your mind called the third eye. Because I was watching some news. I was looking at the news. At the time I didn't understand about time travel. That time travel was real. I was just finding out that time travel was real. But I was I was evidently looking at looking at the news through the eyes of my older self. Hmm. The news that I was seeing had to be 40 years into the future. So as I lay asleep, with the, these two eyes asleep, this, this third eye was awoke. And they said today at the Senate or the Pentagon, like I said, I don't know which one it was. And they were saying that a legislation was being passed and they showed all of the congressmen when they show all of the senators when they show all the lawmakers all the big wigs that you will see when you look at the tv and see the gop making decisions you'll see the democrats making a decision but what i was seeing in my vision was none of them jokers i said what i saw in my vision over 20 years ago 22 years ago to be exact was none of those jokers I saw Moors. I saw brothers with the fezes, with the with the with the fezes, the color of their shirt and their scarf, but they had the business suits of politicians on, and they walk with paperwork in their hand. Then I turned around, I saw brothers in the Nation of Islam had their hair like this, nice cut, smooth cut. You know what I'm saying? Had their bow ties on, but they had their business suits on. I saw Hebrew Israelite brothers, African Hebrew Israelite brothers. They had their turbans on, right? But they had their politicians' three-piece suits on. Looked like they was $1,000 suits. I saw Rastafarian brothers. They had a dashiki over their suit. Vez coming down. Paperwork in his hand. Walking to the other individuals. 
I saw some Pan-Africanists walking around with the kente cloth on. But they had their politician suits. Suits looking like those $10,000 suits. And my mind was, was mind boggled because I was having this vision. I, I think it was during the time that George Bush was uh, junior or the second Bush was the president was I was having this vision. Had to be before before 9-11 happened. I was having this vision. And I didn't understand why I saw nothing but black men as senators, as 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 congressmen passing this paperwork up there at the, at the top part. I didn't understand what I was looking at. I didn't know I was seeing something that was to take place 40 years into the future from which I had the vision. Hmm. Eight years later, Obama becomes president. I say eight years later, Obama becomes president. And I was... I never voted for anybody in my life until <laughs> I heard of the until I, I heard it was a man that was that they said you know a black man running for president. But I regretted the decisions that he made during a, the second term. But when I start to reflect on the visions that I've seen, now it, now what the J. Edgar Hoover has said when he put together the COINTELPRO, right? When he said he would do whatever he could to stop the rise of what? A black messiah. He would do whatever he could to stop the rise of a black messiah. What that black messiah really represent? Is it just one man? Is it just me? Or does that black messiah represent a nation of a of a of awakened black men, right, who have returned back to their consciousness as pharaohs, right? We have been taught that we are Negroes and not pharaohs, right? We have been taught everything to limit ourselves, right? So the future is evident that we as black men of God have to go into the political strata. That's why we are talking about, man, we, we the first king, we did this, we did that, I'm a God, right? But then we get fired from a job. Or we get put out of an apartment, right? So, to be a God, right, is also to have power in the hand right we don't want to just be a god with no power in the hand right hmm. now i would do everything on a secular level on a worldly level you know to get myself out of a situation right but then but then when it comes to, you know what, I have to summon some power to get me out of this situation. And once the power is summoned or some we call it HECA. And you and you're rescued out that situation. That's you demonstrating your power as a God. What they call a miracle, working miracles. And my appeal is not only to black men of God, right? And black women of God. I'm not leaving you out the mix. But it's time for all people of God, right? We see the policies that are being written into existence. Policies that are against both the Bible and policies that are against the Quran. Policies being written into existence where 
you are a God-fearing man or woman, right? You may be a God-fearing man or woman that's black. You may be a God-fearing man or woman that's white or a God-fearing man or woman that's Latino. You send your children to school, right? You, you want your children to get a good education, you know? Is what we're taught is a good education, but we really know it's a miseducation. But they need to know how to read and write until we can open up our own schools, right? And teach what we want to teach. But until that happens, you have the the state funded or government funded schools for your children to go get some education. So you want them to learn how to read and write, right? That's what you they need to know how to read and write, right? Then you want them to learn how to count, right? But you have those freaks. You got billionaire freaks. These are billionaire freaks. You got billionaire freaks that want to write into the school curriculum that your son, right, can say he's a he's a he's a he's a girl. And you can't you as the parent can't say nothing. If you say anything against that, now they want to label you, the parent, as as transphobic, and then bring in the 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 arm, the strong arm of the state to take your children away from you. There's there's this one woman they did this uh this one woman they they, they did this actually they did this to this this man he was a white man and his ex-wife started to grab hold to the trans the trans philosophy and let the son be called what it wanted to be called and, or the daughter it was like a mix-up and we say no that's not no my my daughter is a daughter not a not a boy and so they took the parent they took the child away from the father and the way these these what it they're also doing which has a whole lot to do with with uh, depopulation, right? Is to say that your son can say, you know what? I like this book on I Can Be a Girl but that my teacher gave me, that I can be a girl. I want to really be a girl, right? And then they talk to your children as if they're adults and say, well, you can go ahead and get a gender reassignment. What that means. It's just a fancy sugar coated word. For. Uh, a disectomy. For, for a female it's a hysterectomy. And the parent is told. They can't say nothing. So if you are. A, a, a hardcore. Muslim parent and you and you and you are stuck down into what the Quran tells you Man is man woman is woman God Allah created man and Allah created woman Man is, and woman supposed to come together Yet the school is saying to the hell with your freedom of religion, right? And if you're a stunt down Christian Right, and this is your book and the book says man and, and woman was created, right? And that God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, right? But they want to tell your daughter that she could become Steve, right? And if she wants to get gender reassignment, she could sign a paper, right? And you, the parent, can't say nothing. This is because it this is because godless billionaires, godless millionaires, godless people who always wanted to come out and be what they want to be, right? Without any shame. Now they're writing legislations in or lobbying, let me say lobbying. This is what lobbyists, lobbyists or basically 
they 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 basically they hit the they hit DC lobbyists they hit DC they basically work for, they basically work on the agenda of whatever corporation or business or 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 organization right they work on behalf they're not even real politicians but they lobby they lobby this like it could be Coca Cola Coca Cola can be lobbying for for less te less taxes on uh. Uh, 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 the soda industry whatever it may be you got lobbyists so you have lobbyists that's bringing buckets of money to our politicians in DC to push things and get them railroad push without the consideration of the American people so you have LGBTQ lobbyists who are basically Pushing their agenda to make everybody conformative. Now, I'm going to let you know that we, the Nubian Sufi Empire guys and goddesses, we don't discriminate against anybody, gay, straight, or trans. Right? And we fight for the rights of everybody. That's what the UTBA fight for everybody's rights. But we will not, but we will fight for your rights, but we will not condone anybody trying to conform us to what they are. It, the, 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 to, Put into the school curriculum to make my son to con to 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 comply. Did I say confirm? Comply, compliant. That's what I meant to say. I would, I would, I would. We would defend everybody's rights to be what they want to be, right? Even if they're outside, they're outside of our community, our organization, our movement. But we would not bow our heads to. Comply to what somebody else wanted to be comply to, to be compliant to them, and to make our children to be compliant to LGBTQ politics. So this is the reason why we have to, as people of God, we have to get into the politics so we can be able to push. Agendas that will protect us and protect the way that we want our upgrade, upbringing, excuse me, our upbringing for our children, right? To so our children could be protected, right? Because and this is my message to the LGBT community. I have no issues with you at all. It is your right to be. If you want to be gay, lesbian, trans, that's your right to be that. You know? And when it's time for the elections to come forth, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to listen to everybody's point of view. But it, but it is not your right, LGBT community, for you to force the entirety of the American people to be compliant to you. Right? Because then, it, cause that could be in reverse that you have to be compliant to the heterosexual laws. And you're not heterosexual. Right? So, defending the rights of a people is, is, what, is what every activist stands for. Right? But to say that we have to be compliant, now your movement turns into a form of fascism. When you say that we have to be compliant in our in these cartoons that our children is watching, we gotta see LGBT stuff in the cartoons. We gotta see LGBTQ when I wanna write me a get me a contract or oh that's a grant, I'm gonna sign for this grant. It's five hundred thousand dollars, we need that money. But then it says that my company has to have LGBTQ members in order for me to get the grant. Otherwise I don't get it. Or oh, it's gotta cater to the somewhere some freak or form of fashion. Now it's becoming fascism. Right? That's when that's the old heads, the old heads got a saying that you give them an inch, they take a mile, right? Bob Marley even said that. Hmm. Let me go ahead and cut this off real fast, family.
So there's a so we're we're in a situation of a, a lot of upheaval. And the reason why we're in a great upheaval because this is we're in, we're we're in what the what the Bible called the book of Revelation. But a lot of you you listen to the listen to the preacher, right? And I gotta say the Negro preacher. The Negro preacher only means that preacher who is who still teaches as if he's still you know uh on, in, in the plantation. So Negro preacher or some of these Orthodox preachers, country old time country preachers. Ooh, oh, Revelation. When you looking at that, woo, oh, the moss of the Lord. You know, it's all scared and spooked up, right? But what the book of Revelation is, is really representing the the word revelation is come from the Greek word to unveil, right? This is where you get the word apocalypse from. It means the unveiling. What is the what is being unveiled? Right? What is being unveiled? What's being in, unveiled are the signs of the time. But what does the book of Revelation really mean, right? What does it mean esoterically, right? When it say revelation, it really means revolution, right? It is the book of revolution. It is the, it is the book of the end of the matrix, right? So we watch that movie, The Matrix, understand that, that in order for you to, to break free from the matrix, you got to realize that you are in the matrix, you can't break free from that which you don't even know that you're a slave to or in prison to. So the book of Revelation was speaking about how this matrix, how this system that was that is coined Babylon, right, is coming down, right? And it's coming down by the hand of those who are called in the book angels, right? It says seven angels are bringing seven plagues and bringing down Babylon, right? Hmm. What's that talking about? But see, when I say seven angels, some of y'all just thought about some somebody flapping with some wings like this, right? That's not the angels we talking about. See, the word angel is Greek for messenger, right? So I'm not going to say angels no more because you're going to think about this. So I'm going to say seven messengers. Where were these messages coming from? Hmm. So... As we break down in the Nubian Sufi Empire of Gods and Goddesses, there are seven planets in this solar system that are active in civilization. They, they are global. They are global. Global. And I'm global civilizations. There's no, this is Africa right here. This is Europe right here. This is South America right here. This is this is Canada right here. This is Germany. This is France. They don't think of no separate territories on their planets. It's all one planet, right? And the planet Earth was in that same type of uh, reference. That's why the Native Americans at the time they didn't understand how you can cut, how you can say this is Texas over here, this is Arizona, this is Missouri. They didn't understand it because all the land they didn't you didn't call it the different. You didn't say this is this. They didn't have no such thing as those states. It was all one land in their mentality. So for those who we want to call angels, right, they rule global governments. So, so the planet Mars was its, is its own global government. The planet Mercury is its own global government. They're all global governments up under that one government, which the Bible calls the kingdom of God or the kingdom of God. Right, but we say that there's seven planets that's got civilization. The other two planets are being worked on due to the war that happened in heaven or the war of the gods 66 trillion years ago. This is why when we go into the book of Revelation, it said that the Christ has seven stars on his hand. Right, those seven stars represent the seven planetary governments. Right. And planet Earth is one of those seven planetary governments. Hmm. So the seven angels are coming to, to take the beast, to put the beast out of commission, right? 
because the beast is still trying to sit his ass on the seat of the gods. Right? Your, your biblical Satan, Shaitan, whatever you want to call them, want to keep their asses on the seat of the gods. They don't want to get off of the throne of the gods. Right? So the so-called angels are bringing hurricane, earthquake, all this type of stuff to shake up the economy that the beast has been growing fat off of. Mm. So what you call angels, let's get down to the nitty gritty, y'all. We're going to get down to the nitty gritty. To the nitty gritty. Right? There was one brother, I forgot the brother's name, he was a Moorish brother. And uh, every time he used to go to the Nation Islam services just to get some extra knowledge. And every time the minister got ready to speak, he said, we want some of the meat and potatoes, brother. Give us the meat and potatoes. And even before I got ready to sit down and do my sermon, I heard, I heard, I could have sworn I heard one of the angels say they want, they, they want that, they want, they want, they want to hear that meat and potatoes. So the term meat and potatoes is just another terminology for a fire, a fire Gnostic sermon, right? So I'm going to give y'all the, the meat and potatoes. I'm not going to give you no, I'm not going to get y'all any, uh, you know, any snacks, you know, no appetizers, no, no fish sticks. I'm going to give you the meat and potatoes because I've been, I mean, I wanted to do this Lord of Power sermon from Texas, from Houston, Texas, but there was, there was ignorant and selfish forces that was, that was throwing off me from giving this sermon in Texas. That was, that was my thing I wanted to do and I didn't get to do it, but we will be back in Texas, Houston, Texas in a better better situation and we'll get a sermon from there so this is so when we speak about the uh for the most part the the angels right is some of you still some of you still you can't help you can't help your soul but to keep on thinking of the wrong idea right so when we say angels we say anunnaki this is the angels we talking about we talking about the anunnaki we talking about who the ancient Sumerians called the, the Anunnaki, those who came down from from heaven to earth, or the Elohim, which Elohim is plural for gods. This is why when you look in Psalms 82, it says, God stands in the congregation of the mighty, meaning El, E-L, stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the gods, gods meaning Elohim, right? Ye are all gods, children of who? The Most High God. So this is just... You know, this is coming from Malachi of York, but he didn't originate the, the, the depiction of the gods. Uh, but, you know, this basically is who we're talking about. When we ever said angels or Elohim or Arisha or Neturu, this is who we're talking about. And see, this is the greatest kept secret that the ancient, the ancient, the ancient uh, gods and goddesses of the world, the ancient ones who had the powers to create worlds and open up other dimensions and all this stuff and create civilizations they were they were melanated beings right and i'm using the word melanated because that's the that's the term for the day now i like it better than saying people of color but they were melanated beings and they were melanated beings who created this planet right they created all the planets in this solar system right they created these planets for the sole purpose of populating these planets later on, right? Who will populate these planets? Their descendants will populate these planets, and their descendants will rule as the caliphs over these planets. Hmm. So you have those who only came into power 500 years ago, those who came out of Europe, came out of France, came out of England, came out of Portugal, came out of Spain, came out of Italy, right? Only, only 500 years in power 
and they're still trying to claim a world that they did not create. I said they're still trying to claim a world that they did not create. And those who were put over this planet, they have kept in subjugation for 500 plus years. Y'all say what that has to do with the Lord of Power. Mm. It has a lot to do with the Lord of Power. So as we go back to the book of Revelation, it mentions 144,000, right? What is that talking about? What is the rapture talking about? All right? See, this is the reason why the U.S. government, for since the 50s, was always de uh, denying the existence of so-called UFOs. Now there's a UFO. Now there's a UFO uh, department in Washington D.C. Now there's a UFO. There's a UFO. Now y'all think I'm playing around and I'm just dilly dallying and just talking stuff. I'm trying to make sure I got the right information. Because the reason I'm communicating this to you is because the future that I saw 20, 22 years ago, which is, which is to solidify a good 20 years from now, these so-called angels, these Anunnaki are going to make sure it comes true. So you have this beast that came up with all type of ways to prevent that reality from becoming physical. But even as it says in the Quran, man plans, Allah plans, Allah is the best of planners, right? God is the best of planners. I'm trying to find the, the UFO department. This just got a little bit about the UFOs and dealing with the Pentagon and the Pentagon had to basically formally acknowledge that there are such things as the so-called UFOs. So now they're telling the, now they're telling people that there is a such thing as so-called UFOs, but the, what they won't tell you is how they look. They're gonna continue to let the American people believe that it's yellow is yellow is little is little little green men flying those ships instead of big black men and women. And these men and women are on a higher level of consciousness. And once I get into the deep heart of the uh, the lessons that I want to get, that I want to speak in regards to the Lord of Power, right? I have to take that note down. So. You know, when we read about the book of Eden, uh, not the book, well, we're going to get off on Enoch, but when we read about Ezekiel in the, in the Old Testament Bible, Ezekiel was, was said that he saw, and this is the Old Testament, the prophet Ezekiel, he saw a will within a will within a will, right? And he saw different, in the, different figures come out of the will, and they all had these masks on. There was this one European uh, that wrote, this European man who was basically a, a scholar on, let me see what his name. His name is Eric von Daniken. Daniken, I hope I'm saying his name right. But he wrote a book called Chariot, The Chariot of the Gods. So he was mentioning that the will within the will within the will that Ezekiel saw was, in fact, a so called spaceship. 
right? Or mothership. And the individuals that was coming from, they wore these protective masks due to the atmosphere that they was not accustomed to. The atmosphere, guess what you said? That was one uh, figure came out with a with a bear a bear a bear a bear hand, a bear face, and one came out with a, a lion face, and another one came out with an ox, and you hear all these different animals, sort of similar to the, the pictures that we see of ancient Kenny. Right? But the way he was breaking down, breaking it down, these was masks. And each mask also represented a rank, right? Hmm. And then when we go back to the book of Enoch, now we can go back to the book of Enoch. That Enoch was, was said, and Enoch in our teachings, is he's considered the first Sufi. Enoch walked with God and was no more, for God took him, right? That's what the Old Testament, Enoch, the prophet Enoch walked with God and was no more, right? Did he just Alakadabra disappeared? Or was it a Scotty beam me up situation, right? When we watch Star Trek, what did he say? Scotty beam me up, right? And what happened to the body? The body is com is con and, and the body is uh is converted into its original uh uh, uh subatomic essence, right? Then then it's rematerialized on the ship as that whole person, right? Hmm. Hmm. Now y'all tell me, oh, I'm gonna be rapture. Oh. I'm gonna be raptured to Jesus, but if you don't know the coordinates to the mothership, if you're if you're not if you're not if you're not on a higher frequency, right, where these motherships will be able to pick up your frequency, and you're not lining up with their frequency, you ain't going nowhere. Talking about, I, I, I've been in the church for for thirty years, so I know I'm gonna get raptured. Who gonna rapture you? Where are you gonna be raptured to? See, the whole mathematics is left. Left out of the mathematics, the whole geometry, the whole physics, everything that's dealing with logic is left out of orthodox thinking. Instead of instead of the, the preachers being scientists and going back into the scrolls and interpreting it the right way and said, "No, no, congregation, that's going to be a ship that's going to be taking us up there. That ship, that's going to be the ship that's going to provide the rapture." But we got to raise our frequencies, family. So we got to give up the pork. You know, we don't want to give it up. We got to give up the, the fake God, the white Jesus that don't exist. Right? So it's about the frequency. The, the raising of your frequency is what's going to bring about that rapture. And if you raise your frequency, you will be able to see the ships in the sky. You'll be able to see the ships and the planets. Right? But we see, we are, we're our consciousness... Consciousness have been dumbed down. We, we can't even see the ships. Right? The only time we can see the ships is when they want to make themselves uh, visible. Right? And when they make themselves visible, that's more like a warning. Hmm. So the book of Revelation is detailing these ships that's bringing all type of destruction to this world that we that they bring a destruction to this beast, right? They they bring in destruction to the dragon that's giving power to the beast, and the reason why because they want the beast to get off the seat of the gods, right? Hmm. So, where does this Lord of Power comes in at? As I mentioned to you, I was saying that the prophet Enoch walked with God and no more, right? But when we go get hold of the, the book of Enoch, when we go beyond the regular Bible and get our hands on the book of Enoch, we find out that Enoch was taken aboard a ship, Right? He was took on board a ship and he was shown the whole earth. He was shown the whole earth. He was shown the everything. He was shown the highest heights and the lowest of the low. And he was showed other worlds. Right? But then 
he was given a chance to go back to his sons. He was given a chance to go back and see and see his sons, right? And he and he and he gave his sons 360 heavenly books. I said he gave his sons 360 heavenly books. This is what Enoch did. And so those 360 heavenly books make up what we call Sufism. And Sufism makes up all the religions that ever we come that would ever come on this planet. So Enoch ended up becoming uh, anointed and raised into being an angel called Metrotron. If you ask any European uh, Jew scholar, right? I have to say European Jew scholar because there's a big thing going on with saying the word Jew. And what the actual fact is that Jew is not a race, it's a religion. I myself am a black Jew, right? Meaning I'm a black man from the tribe of Yehuda. That's what that means. So if you ask any Jewish white Jew scholar, a rabbi, what is Metatron? He's going to tell you that Metatron is the angel name that was given to this prophet named Enoch. What does that mean? That means that you could be raised into being an angel. It's in the book. That, that a man born of flesh and blood of a man and a woman. He his frequencies, his frequency, his frequencies was so was so vibrating at such a high high level that that he drew the attention of the mothership. Right? And they made him an angel, meaning they made him into an Ununaki. They made him into an Ununaki. This is the reason why it's so important if you say, well, I am a Muslim, right? You better be a Muslim trying to raise your frequencies. Oh, I'm a Christian. Well, you better, better, better be a Christian that's trying to raise your frequencies. Oh, I'm a Buddhist. I'm a Hindu. Wherever you are, if it's not about raising your fre frequencies to the highest level, then you're in, you're in it for nothing. If you're just going to be a, the same old, you know, the same old low life, or the same worldly minded, not believing in miracles type of individual, then what are, you, what are you going through spirituality for if it's not to raise your frequencies? Because, see, in this world of the beast, they're only able to survive off of a world that's on low frequencies, where everybody's based in corners, pornography everywhere. You know, there's 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 blood sports going on everywhere. You know what I'm saying? There's wars, bloody wars going on everywhere. There's poverty areas where people are poverty and rats and roaches. They're only able to maintain their wealth off of people that's stuck in those low frequencies conditions, those low frequency causing conditions, right? So as we raise our frequencies up, right? We bring heaven down to earth and earth up to heaven. And that's what they don't want. This is why they got these policies. They're writing these policies in that are trying to twist the consciousness of the people so the people can be such in a savage and beastly state that they can prolong their, 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 their time and rulership. But those Anunnaki like, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. The Anunnaki are taking their unks and shining all life on the planet, right? So when you watch the movie, and they and when you we, we was children, we watched the movie. So oh man, uh uh, and, 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 uh that go to the Count Dracula showing up. Here come the Dracula showing up. Get your cross out. Get your cross. Get your cross out. And we was misled into thinking that that crucifix was was to save our day. Now this is the one. This is what we need to chase the darkness away. This is what we need to chase the darkness away. So we have been miseducated even through the, even through watching some television, movies, and stuff like that. So what does the Lord of Power has to do with anything? So I was, I was looking for something. I'm gonna cut my tablet on. Don't want to. 
really don't want to cut it on because this I got to get a new tablet. When this goes all the way dead, man, it takes all day to get it cut back on. It's, it takes all day, man. It just, it just give me, it's, it, but you know what? Technology is technology, you know, just get, get new technology. But it takes all day. But I'm glad I got it, though, because I'm able to do some other features on it. So, going a little deeper into this, this idea of the Lord of Power. When I when I used to teach people about this journey toward the Lord of Power, right? It was it was based on what I read uh, out of Ibn Arabi and some and some other in, intuitions that came through me. Anybody know about Ibn Arabi? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and touch upon Ibn Arabi. I don't want to make this a long sermon because my stomach start growling and I don't want y'all to I want my stomach to sound louder than my sermons, yo. That's whack. But there was a Sufi teacher named Ibn Arabi, right? Ibn Arabi, Ibn Arabi. Let me see if we can find him. And they said that he was a he was a Spanish Sufi teacher, but for real he was more. He was a more. He was a more. Now they write him all different. They write him like he said. They try to make him like he was an Arab. But Ibn Arabi was was basically uh, a great. Great, great, great Sufi master. This is Ibn Arabi right here. And Ibn Arabi was the one who wrote a book called He wrote a book called uh the uh Journey into the Lord of Power, right? Now the Lord of Power, right? What does Lord mean? Lord means owner. What does power mean? Power means the ability to do something, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's power, you can't even, power, I call power hacker. You know what I'm saying? Power is such, it's great. You know, do you know how it is to feel powerless? Right? Now, how does it feel to have power? Right? So, Ibn Arabi, he said, uh, July, 26th of July, 1165, on this day, Ibn Arabi was born. Mystic philosopher, poet. Sage Muhayyadeen Ibn Arabi was one of the world's most spiritual teachers, vastly prolific writer, with some 800 works attributed to him, and very strong influence still felt in the modern world. So he had 800 texts attributed to him. Now we're going to get a little bit more off into the Ibn Arabi. Uh, that we know that he was an alchemist. Uh, he was he was he he, he, wrote, he basically he lived during a time that's that Spain was still up under the Moorish Empire. So this is the time that this man, he lived during a time, the Ibn Arabi, he lived during a time where it was still up under the Moorish Empire. And he had mentioned something about, this is one of the books that he wrote, uh, Ibn Arabi. He wrote a book called Mechan, Mechan Revelation. See, we could pull it up. Well, he has some nice books. This is one of his books. This is well. This is not the Mecca of Revelation, but it's another one of his books. So this is this is one of his books. It's called the uh, yeah. That's the Mecca of Revelations. It's just Arabic. The Al Al Futahat Al uh, Makia. So that's that's the Mecca of Revelation. I'm gonna make sure to try to get that book. You know, I'm trying to make sure to try to get that 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 that, that scroll. And you know, as I was mentioning about the Sufis, a lot of times they want to write Sufis off as being Islamic mystics, but we Sufis, we existed way before Prophet Muhammad was even born. You know, we existed when those first Sufis was 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 dispatched from uh from from uh planet Krypton or planet Amun. You know, uh, uh, it had to be about a good seventy two trillion years ago we've been on this planet, and. Each each time that there was a religion that came about, we was the ones who kicked it off. We was the ones who were, who basically, uh, as the Holy Quran said, we ra we we raised up prophets. So going back to going back to uh, Ibn 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 Arabi, is that uh, he 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 uh, he wrote a, he wrote something in regards to it was a it was a saying. Right. As a matter of fact, let me see. Let me pull, let me just go ahead and pull out 
let me just go ahead and pull out his uh because I got it I got the knowledge right I got the knowledge with me so let's go get that Lord of Power book out let's get the Lord of Power we're gonna read out for that then I'm gonna shut down this tablet because I don't want it going dead on me. I have some things I want to do with this tablet it is this tablet is you know you gotta say to save some juice on it so Ibn Arabi here in in one uh, one commentary to him he was out preaching in the streets and he said the God that you worship is under my feet right and people felt offense over Ibn Arabi saying that, but then years later, they did an ex excavation and they found a, a, a tomb with all diamonds, a treasure, a treasure, a treasure, all type of gold and diamonds and everything underneath where Ibn Arabi was standing at when he was doing his preaching. So it's like your God is money, basically. You know what I'm saying? But it was. It was, it was, it was, you know, when a Sufi says something, it has a reality behind it, even though you don't understand the reality at that time, but it has a prophecy in, in, in it somewhere. So this, this is the book right here. It's called Journey to the Lord of Power. Now understand, you might hear, see a lot of, a lot of medieval Sufism, right? A lot of the Sufis that was in the medieval times, we, we wanted to, to transmit the, the, the alchemy or the science of the black man or or what's commonly referred to as magic or hacker. We wanted to communicate it outwardly, right? But they was this is during a time where Europe Europe started to outlaw magic or hacker or, or alchemy, the science of the black man, in 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 the line of what the with with the you know as being a part of the, the monotheistic community, uh the Muslims lined up with the Christians and start going after or start outlawing a lot of the magic that was practiced in the Middle Eastern areas. And those who were still practicing magic, those Sufis that were still practicing their magic were all were all called the called the genies. This is where you get the word genies from. So this is the book Lord of Power. So a lot of the shamanism that was practiced prior to Prophet Muhammad, a lot of the shamanistic travels became written off as uh, instead of it's different gods that and goddesses that's being met, instead of that, it's different prophets of the of the Bible and the Quran and the Torah and different and different saints. So a lot of everything became hidden. A lot of the ancient theosophy became hidden through the symbolism of the of the Bible and the Quran. You know what I'm saying? So when so and and uh so the the Chaldean was one of the languages that was still being spoken. Chaldean in the East and in Kemetic in the in um, Chaldean in the Middle Eastern area, or uh, not East, but Turkey and all the Asia all area, and in, in the Nile Valley area, Sufis was speaking Kemet. But 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 after you know, because we say that that Bilal, he was the he was a Sufi Kutub. He was the one who introduced the teachings. Of our self Lord Master to Prophet Muhammad, right? And then after that, it just it just took on legs. You know what I'm saying? It took on legs through the different people that came across the the the, the, the science, but they turned the science into a religion. So they start doing after Prophet Muhammad's time. Those who decided to call themselves Muslims, which Muslim was the name of one of Prophet Muhammad's companions. You know what I'm saying? But they named themselves up that instead of going with the Khalifa, because that's what Bilal was pushing the Khalifa, because that's what we really are, Khalifas. But instead of going with that, they went with that, they went with what the companions was talking about. And then after the after the con conquest of Arabia uh uh was a fact, then they started to basically the, the those later generations start thinking it was okay to go and conquer other folks' uh uh countries. And saying and make and doing forced conversions, so they was doing forced conversions. So those Magi, those Rishis, those those sons of Enoch, who were who were uh, called considered the, the the wizards of Juru eons ago, they said, you know what, we're gonna have to, uh, you know, let's go ahead and become this 
let's go ahead and say we outwardly Muslims, but we know we're beyond titles of Muslims, Christians, Jews, but we're going to outwardly say that just so we can get these teachings to continue to be transmitted. So the, the ancient Sufi stops, stop as much speaking the Chaldean or the, and, and the earliest form of Aramaic in the in the comedic and start speaking arabic and persian and turkish so a lot of the sufism start being transmitted into arabic sufi teaches into arabic persian and turkish and there was some times where there was one story about a sufi master you know was teaching had all these ancient scrolls out there had all the stuff with the with the kemet the you know the metaneta the cuneiform you know what I'm saying? Legends about the ancient gods and all that. These different scroll books that's thousands of years old. And then when the when the authorities kicked the door in, right? When the Orthodox, the Pharisees, the Pharisees of, of Islam, which is called the was called the Ulema, they had soldiers kick the doors into these Sufi t Sufi temples, and they kicked the door in, and the Sufi master has a Quran sitting up. All of other scrolls was all of other ancient scrolls, thousands of years old. Millions of years old, billions of years old, hidden. So all they saw was the Quran. Oh, they got the Quran up. Oh, they look Muslims. Right, let's go. And soldiers got their swords ready to chop heads off. You know what I'm saying? But you had some Sufi masters that they wasn't going to hide their pre-Islamic science. They was not going to hide what their, yeah, we, 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 we deal with God, but we also deal with goddess. They were not going to hide, hide. And so there was stories about Sufis being Hung up in the in their in their Sufi mosque, hung. Master with his disciples, so there was a lot of persecution going where a lot of the Sufis had to hide their ancient theosophy up under un, up under up under Quranic symbolism. And this is how the alchemists of Europe was doing when you, those who were called the alchemists of Europe, like the Rosicrucians and all them, because you had the uh, Catholic Church. They had put out the they had kicked off the Inquisition. They had put out the the, 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 the any anybody that considered practicing the magic, astrology, any of that stuff will be burnt at the stake. And so this is why you had those who was was using magical science to create gold and and and, 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 and inaugurate immortality in a vessel like the immortals was mortals that came out of China. You know what I'm saying? So they said, you know, well, we got to hide everything of symbolism. And this is why when you look at the manuscripts of alchemy in the medieval times, you're seeing it's all symbolism. What does this mean? What does a green a green lion mean? What does that mean? What does a red phoenix mean? What does this mean? What is this man with a, with a with, that's half man and half woman? What does that mean? But see, it's the mixing of different magical metals and, and, and principles and gemstones and stuff. That's what it means, right? And, and and all of the, the wizards and the witches that was being murdered by the Inquisition and burnt at the stake. The, 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 the wizard Nostradamus was spared only because he was he just he was gonna tell him that he was gonna give him give the royalty of Europe his psychic abilities how to conquer to conquer Africa. Hmm. So as we get back into the Lord of Power, a man who lived prior to the prior to the time of the invasions, there was no invasions, there was no uh, Inquisition, none of that. He lived prior to that time, so he was free to to write all these magical manuscripts. He said he wrote eight eight hundred magical books. So in this book that he wrote, the Lord of Power. Is describing a shamanic journey, but he's using Arabic terminology to describe to describe it, right? He's using magical. He using he's using Arabic terminology to describe, or scriptural terminology to describe what the average shaman would go through. And when I used to teach about this, about this journey, right? When I used to teach about this journey, 
Now I know I just opened this up. Give me I want to see what I need to see it playing with me. So when I used to describe it, I used to say, imagine you're you're on a journey to God. Imagine you're on a straight road. It's a solid straight road, and the straight road is going to lead you to God or lead you to this, this man sitting on his throne, right? It's going to lead you, but you can't go left. You can't go down this way. You can't go right. You can't go left. You can't go backwards. There's a road leading you straight to a, a, a palace. There's a road lead, leading you straight to a gold palace, and you have to stay, stay on that road and keep going to that palace. And as you keep going to that palace, because you're on a journey, you're on a journey to, you're on a journey to the Lord of Power. So you're on a you're on a journey to the Lord of Power. You're on a journey to do something that's considered blasphemous, right? The Orthodox consider it blasphemous to talk about you seeing God, right? Oh, nobody can see God. You you can't see God and live. Uh -uh. Orthodox Muslims say it. Orthodox Christians say it. Orthodox Jews say it. Everybody Orthodox say you can't see God. Oh man, you 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 can't see him. Uh -uh. But yet the Holy Quran says, whether it's east or the west, wherever you turn is the what? Face of God, right? Wherever you turn is the face of God. Mm. That means I'm seeing a manifestation of God every day when I look at people. And then the Bible speaks about uh, Daniel seeing God as the ancient of ancient of days, right? Mm. Mm. So when I used to teach, I say, imagine you walking on a straight road you can't go left you can't go right but this road is is leading you to where god's palace is at and you keep walking 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 and while you walking there's all type of obstacles that's going to come in your way to prevent you from keep straight this is what they call the surat al you know what i'm saying and you got to stay straight you got to keep walking straight on that path to the most high, right? Distractions gonna be over here. Make me some naked ladies over here if you're a fella. You're like, oh, let me step off this path and go see what the naked ladies talking about, right? You may be a female and you walk into the Lord of Power, and it may be some naked men over there looking like looking like Debo's out there. You're like, oh, I'm gonna go over there. It may be a pot of gold over there on this side of the street. It may be all these things and distractions that get you to step off of that gold that gold path on your way to the Lord of Power. You know what I'm saying? You may have some relatives. Oh man, the cousin got in an accident. Everybody need to be at the at the hospital right now. And you walking on your way to the Lord of Power. All distractions are gonna come. Boss might come in. If you don't, I, mean, I know we, I let you off work, but if you don't come in today, you're fired. I need you right now. All these things are gonna be calling you while you walking on your way to the Lord of Power. Right, but if you can walk and get that to that Lord of Power, get to that Lord of Power, get to the Lord of Power. Now you at the now you at the gate of the palace, right? Mm. And the and the the, the 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 gate guards may say, if you take my place, you can always be here. You will always be next to the Lord. You will always have access to this palace. If you if you take if you take my place and guard the palace, right? Then the other one on the other side say, "Now take my place. You get a better view. Rivers of wine over there. You'll be able to see the rivers of wine and milk and honey and all that." But if you ignore even that, right? Now 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 the way Ibn Arabi was breaking down. On the when he's on this on the Lord of Power, he's talking about there was different prophets and stuff, different prophets and saints like Abraham, Moses, and all them, and you know, you had to fight the urge to just be shuttled for. Oh man, that's Moses. I need to 
step off and just listen to what he got to say. Oh, oh nigga, Abraham, oh, oh this, go, this. You have to, you have to damn near fight yourself to keep going and not let any, not even a prophet or angel or saint be your distraction from, from entering the presence of the, of the, of the, of the, of the Lord of power. You understand? So if you keep, you keep going until you get to the throne of the Lord of power. And then you realize, hold up. There's no one sitting on this throne. There is no one sitting on this throne. I journeyed all the way here to the Lord of power, to this throne. And there's no one sitting on the throne. Where is the Lord of power at? Right? And then that's when it dawns on you. That's an empty chair. This is an empty throne. This is a throne. This is the throne that holds the universe together. This is the throne that holds time and space together. This is, is the throne that holds all the dimensions together. This one throne is, is God's throne. It's Allah's throne. It's Jah's throne. It's Amin Ra's throne. It's, 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 it's the Most High's throne and it's empty. That's when it dawns in your mind. After all that pain, after all those years of pain, and struggle and, and 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 being taught that you are a limited being, being called a loser, you know what I'm saying? By your family members, your friends, or even your ex, probably called a bum, all type of stuff. Or say you ain't good enough for this corporate position, or you're not good enough to uh to to be in this this football or team, or whatever the case is. Now you're looking at a throne that is empty. That's supposed to be God's throne. But it down in your mind, something you tell you to sit down. Something in you tell you to sit, sit down, right? You sit down because you recognize that it's your throne. You sit down because you recognize that you are the Lord of power. Hmm. And as you sit on that throne, you, all of a sudden you see yourself with a purple robe and with gold, gold trimmings. And you see a whole line of people going all the way back to infinity of, 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 of different Sufi travelers. And we call a Sufi traveler a Salik. Salik means a traveler. But you see a, 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 a infinite line of people walking toward the throne, just like you walk toward the throne. An infinite line stretching across planets, stretching across galaxies. An infinite line a white line of heads walking toward the throne to get to where you're sitting at right now and this is your view of all creation of the whole galaxies of the whole worlds hmm. and you were understanding that we did not evolve from monkeys into man. That's Darwinism is is a bunch of BS. We descended. We descended from God into being man. We we descended as divine consciousness, right? And born into mortal flesh. But it was with the sole purpose of once we mastered this physical plane, once we mastered that which we created as God, once we mastered what we created as a thought when we sat on the throne, right? Once we mastered that, then we can, through whatever the religious schools of thought that we ever went through, we can raise our frequencies and ascend back to which we came from. Right. 
that we can ascend back. All right. Hmm. I ran into a white preacher in Houston, Texas. And we was we was we was on some good level of discussion until he brought up Jesus as God. Right? And I didn't want to argue with him because I, I ran across, you know, the High Krishna movement. In the High Krishna movement, they they teach that Krishna is God, right? So I didn't want to argue with him about God. Even though Krishna was born through a a, a woman and a man. A lot of Christians want to say that G Jesus was born through a woman but not through a man. So that makes him special. But he the Jesus was born through a man because the 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 the, the, the Jesus is the son or if Jesus is the descendant of David, right? Is the root of David. Right? And David is not his mother's ancestor. David is the ancestor of Joseph. So how could he? How could how could he he be a descendant of of his stepdads? See them. See they 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 gave us some miseducation from the get go. That Joseph was the descendant of of David and King Solomon. That is how Yahshua is. But there was a Holy Spirit that, rep, that that descended through Joseph. Through Mary in the consummation of their marriage. Right? There is no way in which any man or woman can be born without the agency of a father and a mother. Right? To, and so... This is where the Muslims was up, you know, was strenuous on, is to try to say that God will commit adultery, that God will sleep with another man's woman. All right, this is what you say when you say that He's the Son of God, as if you're saying that God Himself came in and interrupted the marriage. But that's that's not that's not the reality. God was in a man. God was in a man. This is why we get the concept of Gabriel. What Gabriel means means. Man of God, right? That L. So the spirit of God that is was in us is the reason why our children are alive. That spirit of God is the life force. But when the when that when he when the the, the Reverend want to argue me down and say that Jesus is God, right? And I was trying to communicate. I don't want to get in no debates with you on that. But I'm going to respect that that's what you believe, right? And hopefully you can respect what I believe and we can go talk on some other stuff, on some music, on some music, because you say you're in the music. He didn't want to hear, he didn't want to hear me saying I'm agreeing with that, that that's what he believed. He didn't want, he didn't want, he didn't want, he did not want to accept that I said I respect what your, what your belief is. And that's what you believe. I respect that. He didn't want that respect. He wanted me to convert and say, I believe what you believe, right? And I told him at that point, you sound like you sound like a colonizer now. You sound like a colonizer because now you're trying to force me to actually to accept your belief as my belief. Right? But you wouldn't go up, you wouldn't run up in a mosque and, and say that to them. You wouldn't run up in a synagogue or a Buddhist temple or anywhere. You won't do that to them. But you're going to do that to me. So when I'm speaking in regards to this journey to the Lord of power and how we all descended from God and in this Lord, this, this journey to the Lord of power, how we are ascending back into that God here, I'm saying that we all are God. That we all are God collectively. We all are God collectively throughout the universe, right? And the whole symbolism that the Jesus represented was representing how the divine can participate in the time and space that it created. How the divine can participate, right? And they say that Vishnu become Krishna and he participates in the time and space. 
how we all how we all originally this infinite blackness called the universe this infinite blackness this is what we got this symbol of amen Ra for you know what I'm saying? He represents that infinite blackness, but the rod represents the light to see through the blackness. Right? So we all rep we all are star seeds, in other words. We all are star seeds, no matter which what galaxy we are in. All beings that exist throughout the galaxy, we're all star beings. All 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 beings that exist throughout the universe, we're all star beings. We're all are star beings. And then we became incarnated into this physical flesh. A lot of us become stumbly, stubbornly stuck to this flesh, right? And when pain happens to it, it's really brutal, right? But once we learn how to raise our frequencies and and we can cause this flesh to go as the more safe immortal flesh, the flesh divine, you know, we can cause this flesh to become energy. And whenever we cut ourselves, it, the healing, this thing will come right back. You know, there's 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 these type of lizards that you cut their tail off, they grow another tail. And so we we once we are raising our frequencies, we're raising our frequencies back to being God again, right? So it's not just Jesus is God; we all are God. And this 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 moves into the aspect of how. Those who capitalize off of us believing that we're that we're poor, leave, believing that we don't have any resources unless we go beg somebody for some money or beg somebody for a job or beg somebody for a place to stay or beg somebody at the uh, we gotta we beg somebody to, to uh, for for uh, for for our rights as people as humans or whatever. When we when we are that we are God. In, in our knowledge is God, and we really believe that collectively we are God, then we can say things in 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 time, space, and reality will bow down to what we see as God. But because we don't know how infinite we are, we don't know how omnipotent we are, that's why we have those who will be ruling over us as God's over us. Right? But we have to make that journey, that painful journey from this limited incarnation consciousness existence that we have been living. So let me go ahead and get on this law of the power. I'm only going to read a little bit of it, then I'm going to cut the tablet off. Journey to the law of the power. Now, like I said, he's going to use the term Allah a lot. But there was more pre-Islamic Sufi names for God, like Haji, uh, Shemal, Sab Saboth. There was other names that the, that the Sufis called their supreme being. But we had to use the language of the day, right? If we was to go back 2,000 years ago, the Sufis were speaking Aramaic. So it'd be Aramaic writing. That's what the Gnostic scriptures, you know, the Essene, the uh, the Red Sea Scrolls was written by Sufis that spoke Aramaic and not Arabic because Arabic wasn't the language. So let's go ahead and I'm going to read just a few passages out of this Lord of Power book. I'm not going to read a, a whole lot of it because it's just a whole... But he's the way he's speaking that he's he's meeting he's meeting these different saints and everything. He's meeting these different beings. So this is this is what he usually comes in. He usually says um um something like Bismillah Rahman Rahim or in the name of God most beneficent, most merciful. Praise is due to God, the giver an originator of reason, ordainer, and institutor of the transmission. His are the grace and the might. From him are the power and the strength. There is no God save he, Lord of the tremendous throne. 
And may the peace and blessings of God be upon him in whom are established the signs of guidance, whom he sent with the light by which he guides and misleads whom he wills, and upon his noble family and pure companions until the day of judgment. I shall answer your question, O noble friend and intimate companion, concerning the journey to the Lord of power. May he be exalted in the rival in his presence and the return through him from him to his creation without separation. Certainly there is nothing in existence except God, most high. His attributes and his actions, everything is he. And of he and from he and to he, if he were to be veiled from the world for a blink of an eye, the world would vanish at one stroke. Now, you notice he said everything is he. The whole creation is he. And he mentions about the companions, because that's letting you know he's coming from the Sunni, the Sunni uh sect. But he says everything is God. And he said if God was to reveal his face, everything would be would be uh basically would cease to exist. So he's writing this lesson, he says, um, uh it is only it only remains through his preserving and the watching over it. However, his appearance and his light is so intense that it overpowers our perceptions so that we call his manifestation a veil, right? Now, I told y'all at first how, uh, you know, the Supreme God, you know, after the war in heaven, he veiled himself. I mean, the divinity, the, the God walking around and being a public, you know, basically, God veiled himself, you know, and that was because of the war that went down. So this power, the power, his power would never be misused. So this is basically talking about, you know, the the uh, the journey to basically to polish your heart so you can actually see God beyond the veils, beyond the hidden aspects that we can actually return back to actually seeing God again. And to see God is to see the... Is, to see God is also to see the world differently, right? So all this stuff that we see in the murders and killers on the news and stuff, if we was to focus on seeing God through all of that, it, all this madness would disappear and we would actually see this planet Earth as the paradise that it really is. But right now we experience someone else's 500-year-old nightmare, right? So he's basically, like I said, he's breaking down the, the journey. I want to see if I'm going to fast forward. Because he's basically speaking about this journey to the Lord of power. Uh, and he's basically breaking down that after your journey, you have to re return back to yourself. Meaning you have to go back to your regular life. But you're going back to your regular life with power. Right? With power. So this, this moves... This moves the reverend out the way, the priest, any ancestor, you don't need them. That moves all them out the way, and you're going directly to the power source, right? This is even moving prayer out the way. Because you're in your meditations and your yoga and your and your whatever you're doing is bringing you closer to, to the Lord directly. Why are you still alive? I shall first describe, may Allah grant you success, the nature of journey to him, then the procedure of arriving and standing before him, and what he says to you as you sit on the carpet of his vision. Now he says what the God himself says to you. Hmm. And this is not just a mystical realm journey. If you are raising your frequencies right now, you know what I'm saying? You keep your frequencies raised. God, who is hidden among the people, as the people, God will come up and shake your hand directly. Right? Like I told you, when I, that once, the, the Sufi group, I was, you know, up under, uh, when I was up under, you know, going to the, the Sufi uh, gatherings at the Tekka of, uh, Ba uh, Ab Abdullah Babo or Lord's Galleon and the black man showed up to the Sufis that was on, on a lunch break and 
told him his name was Allah. He was God. You know what I'm saying? And so they frequencies was raised so high that when they stepped down after they finished doing the chants and the zikr and the word, black men walk up to them and greet them and say he's God. And was not crazy, was not a lunatic. Because when I asked the asked the, the uh, Sufi teacher about this black man, he said, "Yeah, he was up. I had him. He, he was up, up in my apartment. We was, you know, uh, drinking chai tea and, and and dropping science. And you know, he, so the Sufi teacher had him. Had, God, they evoke. They their chants and their zikrs were so powerful that they brought God out of the unseen into the scene. Now." Back in the days, I used to say the black man is God. My father was back in the 90s like, ain't no nappy head nigga God, right? Because he had the white Jesus on the wall. But yet, my father never lived to get to see the movie Bruce Almighty. And guess who they show, guess who they show us? Guess who they showed us? God is being on Bruce Almighty. Hmm? Guess who they showed us? And this man, you hear no scandals or nothing, nothing going on in, in this man's life, right? But but my 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 father never got a chance to see this movie, right? When my father said, "No nappy, ain't no nappy here, nigga, nigga, God," right? But 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 Hollywood didn't think so, you know. And like I said, signs and symbols are always always going to be for the conscious mind, right? Always. Now check this out. There we go. Oh man, what thing get in my way? Go out my way. I hate when I did that. I, I had the pitch up there and then they do this old stuff. Screen jumping on me. I had it up too and he just did that. Get out the way, man. He, 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 sometimes I love these phones and sometimes I don't love them at all. So I don't know why my uh why that popped up for 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 for, for me to get on a road, GPS dropped. I'm not on a road nowhere. We trying to show people something. This the tech, the tech trying to get the tech is acting stubborn right now. It must have got that goat energy in it. So here we go. So there we go. Bruce Almighty. My father did not get the. He did not get the letter to see this movie. So they did show a black man as God, right? They showed a black man as God. So uh, this is one of the things where a lot of the Sufis were being killed because Sufis are saying God is a man and all this stuff and you know God is in me and all that and then the five percent was getting was getting was getting uh, a lot of five percent was losing their life we're dealing with them orthodox Muslims because they were saying the black man is God yet no but none no, but guess what ain't nobody go to Hollywood and say Hollywood why did you put this movie out with God being a black man for and none of the orthodox went, went and said they didn't do no complaint they didn't protest or nothing right they didn't do nothing they just they just Barely granted that they show Allah or God as a black man, right? And, 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 and look, Pete Gain, he's looking like he's looking like basically what 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 the world is gonna be feeling like when they find out that God is black. Like I can't believe this. These are the people that we put down, and they're actually the actual supreme being. So, so when you when you when you were raising your frequencies. And because of that, the Sufi gathering, they were all they was the, that black man walked up to them and said that he was God, right? And it was not a nutcase at all because the Sufi the Sufi teacher had him in had him upstairs drinking Tai Chi with him. When I when I asked him, I said, hey, "Do you know this man that walked up to this black man? He said he had a nice suit on and a nice haircut and he was civilized and well disciplined and and uh, well mannered." And he, you know, this black man that they was talking about. Yeah, and my Sufi teacher was a white man, or is a white man. You know, he's he's really not. He's still I consider still my you know my shape, but you know me and him. You know, he already know that I was gonna go back to teaching Nubian and Sufi, but his his him and his and his uh and the Sufis that saw the the black man who said he was God, they were all white, right? So I I ain't gonna say okay, you got to be black to see God, no. Because God manifested Himself as a black man to some white people, right? They were, they were, but they were not regular white people. They was on what I'm on. They on, they was on the Sufism. They was on the alchemy, and they was raising they, they, they frequencies. 
So they let you know that God re won't reveal himself to anybody, right? God gonna reveal himself to anybody, any race, nation, a uh, 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 culture. You know what I'm saying? And they, evidently they had their frequencies raised so high that that God, who is actually the black man, showed up and, and, and showed up to shake their hand. You know what I'm saying? Showed up to showed up to shake their hands. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. That's just something I want y'all to think about. So we talking about this Lord, this 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 journey to the Lord of Power. We talking about, you know, uh, the way that Ibn Arabi was breaking it down. He was saying that, you know, saying he was basically letting us know <clears throat> of this journey. This journey is a journey that that would demonize you. This journey would de would demonize who you are. Demonize me, make God. You ain't gonna walk, keep on walking close to God and you're not and you're not gonna be you're not gonna be of God. You know what I'm saying? So this is what I'm talking about right here. This is how the ancient ancient Egyptian people, the or the ancient Kemetic people, the ancient Nubian people. This is how the ancient world saw as God, right? And they carved it on stone so there wouldn't be no mistake. It won't be nobody coming out talking about the black woman is God. No, they didn't put no black woman as God. They put the black man as God. The black woman is the goddess. You know what I'm saying? There ain't no white Jesus. That didn't exist. This is who this is who they this is this is who they saw as God. Right? And they put it on the wall so there would be no 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 misunderstanding. Right? So as we on this journey to the Lord of Power. Ibn Arabi says uh, about a return. So once you get into these other dimensions, when you get into these these higher dimensions, these sh shamanic realms, you know what I'm saying? It's a whole different reality, a whole, whole different technology. And also, once you experience this, the, the in, inner intercourse of dialogue with different people, of like minds in this in on this physical plane, that's gonna alter you. So you're gonna be altered in the inner realms, and you're gonna be altered in the physical realms on this journey to God. Something, something is gonna change in you, right? He speaks about realms, right? He speaks about different realms too. He says the realms, although they are many, are all derived from six. The first realm, and see, he speaks about these different realms. And like I said, I want y'all to get the book because I don't want to be, uh, but, but see, he's talking about different realms. This thing is just so much to think about. So he's talking about different realms, and we we look at those realms as meaning dimensions. Also, Ibn Arabi was the one who first had said about the 99 names of God being lords, right? And so there's something in uh that's in commonly referred to in Sufism and, and in Orthodox Islam is the 99 beautiful names of Allah, right? So the 99 names could be, one of the names could be like uh, Al-Nur, right? Al-Nur, meaning, meaning the light, right? But that correlates that correlates with our sun because the sun is 93 million miles away and Al-Nur is the 93rd name. You know what I'm saying? Or there's names like Al-Haq. So Haq means the truth. So all these are different, different names, but esoterically, those names are lords. And when I'm saying the lords, I'm meaning what you would consider angels or powers, right? And there was a book, I'm, a, I'm gonna look for that book, but there was a book that was breaking down how a Sufi can chant one of those names. A Sufi can chant one of the 99 names and become that name. I hope y'all heard what I said. 
I said the Sufi can chant one of those names, one of those 99 names and become that name or one of those 99 lords and become that lord, right? So they were speaking about how uh, the, the the book that I had got, I got to look for it again. All right, I'm fine, I'm fine. But it was saying how you could chant the name, uh, let's say like, uh, like what, uh, Awadu, right? Awadu means the loving, right? So instead of saying Aw, which is the, you will say Yah, Yawadu, which means Yah is oh, like oh my god, goodness, you know what I'm saying? So you say, so you say Yawadu, 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 right? And you'll say it in accordance to the number, just like if you're doing a mantra in Hinduism, you'll you'll do it, you'll chant 108 times or more. So there's a certain amount of numbers that you'll chant. In Zikr, you, you would chant one of those 99, 99 names to say, Yahwadu, Yahwadu, Yahwadu. And Yahwadu means the beloved. So what so with that do with that chant, it will make all creation fall in love with you. I said it will make all creation fall in love with you. That's what the Yahwadu would do. And so each chant, or say if you're in a situation. And the situation is a dark situation. It's like, you know, you you feel like there's there's darkness trying to stop you from starting your business or or starting your career or, or whatever you're trying to do, and you need some light. So that's when you'll use the ninety nine name, uh, uh, Anur. But if you won't say Al Nur, which is the light, you will say Yanur, which is O light, like O light. Oh my goodness, I need light, like so. He said. Ya, ya no, ya no, ya no, ya no, ya no. Until your aura start to shine forth like that light. Until it shine like the light of the sun. So each one of those 99 names are names in Sufi ceremonial magic you can use. You understand? And I have to let it be known that I am a ceremonial magician. So whenever I mention the word magic, I'm speaking as a ceremonial magician, not as a not as a practicer of witchcraft or nothing like that. Even though ain't nothing wrong with the word witchcraft because it only means the, the, the craft or the wise. You know what I'm saying? But I'm speaking in regards to ancient Sufi ceremonial magic. So uh, Ibn Arabi touches up on those 99 names with some 99 lords. And you could send those lords forth. But the Sufi teacher... Uh, Contemporary Sufi teacher teacher by the name of uh, Bawa Muhyiddin. That's when I first heard about Sufism was from him. There was a Moorish brother that had the booklet. And I'm like, what's the booklet right there? And it had the Sufi on there and he let me borrow it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I think I talked him into letting me have it, but it was my first introduction to Sufism. And it was from this Sufi Sufi master uh, named Bawa Muhyiddin in he, he was from Sri Lanka. And so American students and, and followers, they brought him from Sri Lanka to America. And they, they ended up building a mosque and everything. But he was breaking down how the word Allah is heavy. It's, sub, it's heavy. It's like, it's like it's so heavy that the hands cannot carry the word God or Allah for real. The only thing that can carry is the is the arsh, which, he's, which he called the throne, which is the the crown, the crown chakra, right? So he was breaking that down, and basically, like all of the ninety nine names or the ninety nine lords or at our at, once we got this activated, you know what I'm saying? We can command those lords to, to take on certain things and do certain things. And this is where we also get the concept of the genies of the lamp and all that stuff from. But this is the real lamp right here, right? You see that the lamp is really that is the way that we can see through the darkness, right? That light, that fire that comes from the lamp. So there's a lot of signs and symbols of that. And uh, so I mentioned that because Ibn Arabi touches up on the 99 Lords. You know? <clears throat> so in your so in your journey through the Lord of Power, you're gonna you're gonna end up seeing these different angels or these different lords or these different saints or these different prophets. And a lot of people think that. The prophets of the Bible are dead. The saints of the Bible are dead. You know what I'm saying? No, they're not dead. They're not dead because once you gain the presence of the Most High God, He 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 get, He makes you an immortal. 
he, he makes your name immortal. You know what I'm saying? He makes your name immortal. So this, and then once I think about this way that this book is put together, the journey to the Lord of power, he's talking about all these th things you're going to see, these people that you're going to see. Uh, it almost reminds me of the book of coming forth by day when there's a journey of Ra and you got to go through these 12 gates and these different 12 gates. There's different pearls and stuff that's going to attack you and all this other stuff. You got a pet right there, the serpent. And all these different things is gonna come up, and you gotta be, you gotta have enough hecka to basically ward off certain things. So I'm gonna, so basically he's breaking down to people that's traveling. So I'm just gonna read a little, little bit of this. So he says, uh, where are we at? Let me see where I can start at. So he's talking about this journey. So we, we look deeper into the journey. We look deeper into this journey. So it says, uh, he will strip you of everything you held onto and you will be lost. But if you let go and occupy yourself with with dick with, with dicker or zicker and take refuge at the side of the re, of the remembered God, then he will free you from the mold and, uh, and unveil the ve the vegetable world. Every green thing will call out to you its harmful and beneficial qualities. Let your judgment be what it was before. At that time of the unveiling of the mineral world, let your nourishment be what increases heat and moisture. And at the unveiling of the ve vegetable world, let it be the, the balance of heat and moisture. And if you do not stop, he will reveal the animal world to you. The animals will greet you and acquaint you with their harmful and beneficial qualities. Every sort of creature will acquaint you with its proclamation of majesty and praise. Pay attention to, to, to this. If you become aware of all these worlds as engaged in the same uh, dicker or zicker, which occupies you, your perception is e imaginational, not real. It is your own state which is called up for you in all existing things. But when you witness in them the verities of their own dicker or zicker, that is sound perception. This ascent is the ascent of dissolution of the order of nature, and the state of contraction will occupy you in these worlds. Then after this, he will reveal to you the infusion of the world of life force into lives and what influences this has in every being according to its predisposition how the how the expressions of faith are included in this infusion and if you do not stop with this he reveals to you the surface signs and you will be admonished with er with terrors and many sorts of states will befall you. You will see clearly the apparatus of transformations, how the dense becomes subtle and subtle dense. And if you do not stop with this, the light of the scattering of sparks will become visible to you, and there will be a need to unveil yourself from it. Do not be afraid and preserve in the, the dicker or zicker. If you preserve in the dicker or zicker, Disaster would not overcome you. And if you do not stop with this, he reveals to you the light of the ascendant stars in the form of the universal order. And you will see directly the adab and proper conduct for the entering the divine presence and the adab for standing before the real and the adab for leaving his presence for creation. And the perpetual contemplation by different aspects of the divine names 
the, the manifest and the hidden, in the perfection of which not everyone becomes aware. For all that passes away from the aspect of the manifest becomes under the aspect of the hidden. The essence is one. Nothing has passed away. And after this, you will know the name, excuse me, after this, you will know the means of receiving divine knowledge from God Most High and how one must prepare oneself for, for its reception. So know the proper conduct of receiving and giving and contraction and expansion and how to protect the heart, which is the place of arrival of states from burning destruction and all the way in, in all that in, in that all the ways are circles there is no straight line this letter is too brief to deal with matters like these and if you do not stop at this so basically if you don't stop at all these different wonders all these different visions all these different blessings all these different things that can make you feel afraid or all these different things that can make you feel happy you said even animals going to speak to you to get you like, hey, you're like, what did an animal just speak? Well, let me go over here. So if you can, uh, if you can basically be strong enough in your spiritual ascent in the in the in the astral realm, right? To say all this stuff that I'm seeing, I'm going to keep going straight till I get to the Lord of Power. You know what I'm saying? Or ooh, I'm scared. I'm not gonna. I just saw like a monster thing. I'm I'm I'm, I'm not gonna mess with that. If if you let any of that, a fear of hell throw you off, right? Or the desire of heaven throw you off. You know what I'm saying? You're going to lose the one goal and that's to, that's to become one with the Lord of power, right? And I mean, when I say oneness, I ain't saying, oh, I'm for the goal. I'm, I'm for the goal on this journey, Lord. I'm going to go hug God like this. No, I'm saying that you get to this power and, and you become one in a form of there is no more uh, East Sasha Court. It's only the Lord of Power. There is no more uh, Johnson Bay. There's only the Lord of Power. There is no more uh, 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 Tamika Muhammad. There is no more. There's only there's only the Lord of Power. There's only the Lord of Power. But we have to be able to basically everything that we grew up loving, everything that we grew up fearing, everything that we can dream of. If we could, if we could be strong enough to make it to that one goal, right? Then we gain, we gain unity with He who created all creation, right? Hmm. And then we come back as, as lords of power, because once we merge with the Lord of power, right? We come back as lords. Of power, right? Right now, we are lords of no power. We got those who are being lords over us. You know, we got those who are being landlords over us. They're lords over our own land. We need to be lords over our own land. They lords over the land that we own, right? So the only way we can get this power that can put us up and beyond is we if we stay on the Sarata Booster King and we don't deviate due to our fear or or due to our, our excitement. The goal is God. God is the goal, right? But who is God? So we're going to go ahead and, uh, like I said, I would like you all to get this, get this text for yourself and understand that you're reading a book that's over, that's close to a thousand years old, right? And it's written in with Islamic references because the Sufis had to write all, they had, we had to write our alchemy and our science. We had to disguise it or, 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 or be killed. So get this book right here. It's called Journey to the Lord of Power. So what I'm going to do next is there's a other book that I had got. My Sufi brother got it, and and, I, and it got and it got misplaced. And I need to look for it again. I need to get this book, but it's a book called the Unveiling of Secrets, right? And the Unveiling of Secrets is another shamanic journey type of text. It's a text 
it's it's a it's it's by a uh, Sufi teacher named Bakli, right? And this Sufi teacher, he happened he happened to have been Persian, so he was Persian. And what he was writing, he was writing saying that on his shamanic journey, right? On his on his shamanic journey, he kept on coming across manifestations of God Himself. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna read some inserts from this that because I, I was trying to actually find the text on the the uh I got the journey to the Lord of Power I got that already but I'm I was trying to find this the book called the unveiling of secrets and the way that it's broke down uh the guy he, he basically break it down the, the the commentary about says the god introduced by the muslim mystics which i don't like that word muslim mystics because we sufis we're beyond titles of muslim christians and jews we're beyond those titles we're more like magi magi mystics if you say anything right but it says the god introduced by the muslim mystics have an individual existence and unity Kash, Kash Al Aswar, The Unveiling of Secrets by Rules Behind Bakli is about his mystical experiences of the truth, the manifestations of God, and ways of guiding the holy travelers, the Salik, toward him. The purpose of this study is to answer these questions to what extent does Rules behind follow the Muslim mystics about the individual God. To what extent is his eschatological background and his famil familiarity with the Quranic verses in the tradi tradition hadith effective in shaping his mystical experience about the individual God? How can the idea of individual God in Kash? Al Ashwar be analyzed from an epistical epistem epist epistemological point of view by using analytical descriptive method. The present article examines views of rules behind Bakli about the manifestation of God and how He is present in the world. God appears in the form of an individual one and manifests Himself in in the shape of a sage, shape, shepherd, musician, beautiful Turkish man, dancer, cupbearer, muezzin, butcher, lion, red rose, light, valuable and expensive stones for directing and, a, and attracting rules behind toward himself. So despite, you know, this scholar keeps saying Muslim mystics, and trying to put Sufism in a in a in a in a in a, in a fourteen hundred uh, contain fourteen hundred year old container. What I like that was that's been speaking about about this Sufi this Persian Sufi saint, uh, Bakli rules behind Bakli is that on on his journey he kept saying that he kept seeing God manifesting as a man, right. So even so, even in different dimensions, these different dimensions, like we spoke about the book of coming forth by Day and Kemet, in these different these different dimensions that this Sufi teacher, this Sufi master, was traveling in these different dimensions, he was basically he made a a shamanic journey. He basically made a shamanic journey into the Quran, and in his shamanic journey, God was manifesting Himself as a man as a arm, leg, leg, arm, head. And God will manifest himself as a shake. And he'll manifest himself as a as a as a, a saint. He'll manifest himself as one who's at the tavern pouring people drinks. He will manifest himself in the form of a man in the arm, leg, arm, leg, arm, head. And 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 Anything dealing with like precious stones and all that, these have the qualities of divine qualities in them that can be utilized. But at the same time, what, what we are getting from the unveiling of secrets, which I'm going to 
get hold to it and I'm going to do another sermon. I might do another sermon on that one, a whole separate one on that one, on a, on a unveiling the secrets. But in the, in the whole text dealing with the unveiling of secrets, it's showing you how basically, say like if you yourself was on a shamanic journey and you wanted to see God face to face, now you see God manifesting as these different individual people, right? And each individual that he's manifesting in, there's a quality, there's an important quality or a lesson or a wisdom behind what we Sufis call a tajali or a manifestation, a divine manifestation, right? Once again, Orthodox Islam, they don't, they, 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 they consider that shirking blasphemy to saying that God can manifest as anything, that he's just energy and doesn't have a form, don't have a body, don't have anything, right? Yet, the Holy Quran tells us that wherever you turn, it's the face of Allah. So how could a fate, how could, how could Allah have a face and don't have a body to go with the face? See, that's the spookism that we've been taught, and that spookism has come out of the 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 the, the, uh, the 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 Platonism of those of the Greeks, and the Platonism of the Greeks that came in, they the ones who got hold of the of the of the of the lessons, and they start to put their spin on top of everything, right? But the true nature of the Lord of Power, the true nature of the, the manif God manifesting Himself, is the is the is that nature of of the attainment. The attainment that a person can actually evolve into that into that 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 cosmic or that intergalactic or interplanetary or interdimensional uh, uh, conglomerate of ultimate cosmic beings who do exist as God throughout the universe. There's exalted beings that exist as God throughout the universe, right? And we are descended from that. Right, but it all and our our whole dilemma is based on the fact that we created these worlds when we existed as cosmic beings. We created these solar systems and these galaxies. We created them, you know, as as, as an expression of our power. But in order for us to enjoy that which we we created, we descended and allowed ourselves to be incarnated into these worlds. We allowed ourselves at different levels to be incarnated into these worlds so in which we can grab and we can rule over these worlds, ourself, Lord, and Master over these worlds, right? And, uh, and, we have, uh, and we have forgotten our divinity. We've forgotten where we came from, that we, that we are collectively the Lord of power. And so in order for us to get a spark of consciousness of who we are and to return back to who we are, that's when we that's when we uh kicked off the, the science of prophets, right? But we had to kick off the science of angels first because it was the angels or the messengers who would be sent to dispatch those who would be later become the prophets or the symbolic roosters to wake us all up from our sleep. So, to give you a, a quick preview of what's about to happen. Money, magic, spirituality, politics, all are about to become one. Some people might say, well, I thought your name was Pharaoh this, Pharaoh that. Now you're talking about politics. You're talking about politics one day, then you're talking about money the next day. It's all one. The man that you call Pharaoh, the Pharaohs were the first politicians because the Pharaohs ruled the state, but they was also the high priest of the government that they was that they was ruling over. So there's so there's no separation. But we have been taught to separate things. So we're gonna end up I want y'all to try to look for this book. It's called, it's called the Unveiling the Secrets. It's called the Unveiling the Secrets. See, we got the whole thing right there. Let's make sure we got the whole thing. Try to get this book, the Unveiling the Secrets. Unveiling the Secrets. So it's called. If you can see it, if you can't see it, understand. 
but the unveiling of the secrets diary of a Sufi master. Get hold of that. Get hold of that as well as the Lord of Power and do commentaries over it. Because we are all on a journey right now. We are a journey. We're on a journey from being limited beings to being unlimited beings. And so when we reflect back on that, on that, on that movie, The Matrix, right? Everybody that was unplugged in the Matrix, they was just doing everything that the Matrix programmed everybody to do. So you got people that's so, so when we saw the background of the Matrix, and you saw all those sleeping pods, those electrical pods that everybody that the people were sleeping in, they were their, their their bodies was in these sleeping pods. But but on the other side of the of the matrix, on the other side of the matrix, on the on the other side of the matrix, they didn't have no they didn't have no sleeping pods. On the other side of the matrix, let me see if I can go ahead and get that. And I'm doing this sermon, y'all. I'm not giving a Sunday sermon, so. I'm not giving a Sunday service. So this is it right here. All right. I mean, I may get one. I'm not sure. But right now, I need to get I need to get some things together uh, on, on what I'm trying to do. You understand? So I it, most, most nine out of ten, I'm not gonna give a sermon. I'm not gonna get a I'm not gonna get a uh 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 most likely I'm not gonna get one. I'm giving everything, I'm giving everything I got right now. And I hope don't nobody get mad at me, you know what I'm saying? But that's what it is, you know. So so this is the this this is the this is the matrix sleeping pod right here. So you got everybody, everybody, your mama, your daddy, your uncle, your auntie, everybody, they your, your baby mama is giving you problems, your or your baby daddy giving you problems. You know what I'm saying? Everybody is in these sleeping pods and our consciousness as of right now, we're doing everything that the system say do. We go to the job, we don't go to the work, you know what I'm saying? We go to the church, you know what I'm saying? We go to the mosque, you know what I'm saying? Or we go vote, or we do all this stuff, you know what I'm saying? And and when and and then we then when it's time to die, we lay down and die. And not knowing that we we being re 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 we 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 what they call it regenerated regenerated, we being refed back to the matrix, right? I don't know why this ain't coming out like I want to show it. So we being so now we being refed back to the matrix to come back and do it all over again. All over again. We doing it be all over again, all right? And as and, and it's and and the reason why is we we're we're being recycled to do it all over again is because we have not broke free from the matrix. We have not broke free from the fact that we are all unlimited beings. All right? And when I say unlimited, I mean that we have unlimited life force. All right? But we, but we, but we cannot tap into that unlimited life force if we ignorant. We can't tap into that un, un. That, uh, that unlimited life force, and we're not willing to do some yoga every day. If we're not, if we're not willing to do yoga practices every day, if we're not willing to do tai chi practices every day, if we're not, if we're not willing to meditate, if we're not willing to be spiritual over material. Another thing is, as I was when I first started off, you know, when I was speaking about the notes that we are worth so much money. Deal with these notes. There's notes. In our social security, we worth so much money, worth so much money. I'm not gonna get off into it because I don't got all the information to break it down right now. I'd rather get somebody who's got who's got the info to say it say it the right way. But we are we are we are we are worth so much as individuals. Even you, you say, Well, I'm I'm in Detroit, man. I'm in, I'm in a man, I'm in a rough part of Detroit. Man, it's Rats are the size of dogs here where I stay at in these projects, man. It's bullets flipping flip and zipping everywhere. Man, uh, we get food stamps. We still get the, the, the food stamps. We, we so broke, we still get the food stamps with the with the paper. You know what I'm saying? We only get the card. You know, we got it hard. And I like to say, man, family, you are so rich. But we have been taught to... We have been taught to use our own words to limit ourselves. That's why 
I don't let nobody tell me what I can't do. Right? See, when you say a word, you say what you can't do, or you say what another person can't do, you helping to make it, you helping to make that not happen. You help you 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 helping to make that come true. No, we can do all things. Right? Hmm. So if we See, we're we living in a hood. We're living in the projects. This is all this work for. This is all we can do. Because we're on the street that we didn't go to college. So since we didn't go to college, we don't got the, we, we can't get out the hood. We can't get out of a, 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 every day can be your last day. You, you get murdered neighborhoods. Because we didn't go to college. Or we don't got this much money. Right? But, but see, the powers that be don't want to let you know that you got wealth on your tongue, you can save one million dollars coming to existence. You can save brand new house coming to existence, and you can be wise and put it in a certain area. Oh, sh brand new house in Maplewood. Get up out and get out the north side. Brand new mansion in Beverly Hills. You can say these things with your mouth and your the the power as you being a lord of power. Is you being a lord of power, then once you speak into existence, your power is paying for what you want. The power is paying for what you want. You want a brand new car? What type? Man, I want to give me a, a 2002 uh, uh, Acura, man. That's what I want. No, I want a 2002 Lexus. Yeah, Jeep, that's what I want. Yeah. All right. Then what you gonna do to get it? Man, I'm gonna go try to get two more jobs. Try to get a loan. Mm. But you gonna kill yourself before you get the car. And then the car ain't even gonna be there no more. See, this is all the time and space trap that they put us. And I went, I have been through the same thing. Times I wanted to get me a car. And I say, well, I'm gonna get a new car. Right? And then I go through the time and space. Let me go get this job, this job, this job. And I'm working my ass off. And it's never enough to get the car. And then by the time I get the money to get the car, it's gone. All right? Somebody bought it. Somebody bought it within those within that month of me getting the job to go save up to go get the car. But I notice whenever I do the the whenever I speak that magic. Whenever I speak that hecka, whenever I visualize that thing in my mind like Patar did, how he visualized the sun before he spoke the solar system into existence. When I visualize that thing and then I command it into existence, forces move obstacles out the way, right? Time and space is brought together with my car in the middle, and I'm driving away, right? I'm driving away because I use a power that is, that is, that is greater than time and space. That is greater than me going to go and wait weeks in the month and it's gone by now. So we have the power to move time and space out of the way and whatever we want. We 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 are our own genies. We be the genie that say, my wish is my own command. Right? And you and you command it into existence. You command it into existence. Whatever you want, you command it into existence. This goes back to the science of Ra. Ra said, bird, and birds came into existence, right? He just said the name of that thing. Ra said, people, and people came into existence. But even goes back before the times of Ra, even go back to the original Lord of Power, which is Nebuchadnezzar. The original Lord of Power. And Nebuchadnezzar, he was in the womb of triple darkness, but he had no form. He existed as consciousness, right? And I said, we all exist as this cosmic consciousness. We, What could we do as cosmic consciousness? So, so Nebuchadnezzar said the word Kepera, which means coming to, come to being, coming to existence. And he became, he became arm, leg, arm, leg, arm, head. He became that full form. He became that Haji. You know what I'm saying? That power that will travel through our eons 
always becoming us, always becoming us, always becoming worlds, always becoming everything. Now we got them. You have to speak into existence all that you want in existence for you. You can't speak somebody else's stuff into. You can't go and say, oh, he, she, he. You can't dominate and invade and violate someone else's destiny. Because then you got to deal with the laws of Maya. But you can speak what you want. If you don't want to be in a rat and, rat and roach infested ghetto, speak that. Out of your existence. Speak speak that out of your reality. I don't want that reality no more. I don't want to be living where it's gunshots and bullets popping everywhere. I'm speaking that out of existence for myself. And I'm speaking into existence a neighborhood where I, 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 I'm speaking into existence me, me my own Kirkwood. My, uh, a black Kirkwood. A black Ledoux. For those of you that's not from St. Louis, those are the prestigious white communities in St. Louis, where you could where you could leave your door wide open, ain't gonna worry about nobody walking in there. Where you, where you could be out there, you know, just looking at the looking at the moon in your neighborhood, and you ain't gotta worry about bullets zipping, right? We do not have to let ourselves to uh, to remain subjugated to jacked up realities and jacked up environments, right? You pushing a hoopty, right? And you tired of pushing that hoopty? Speak that hoopty out of existence and in its place, speak in a, a Cadillac. I said, speak a, a drop top Cadillac. Uh, uh, speak a STL ball cap drop top Cadillac into existence. Speak a portion to existence. Speak that hoopty out of existence. And speak that portion into existence. You look at your bank account. You only got. A dollar in your bank account. You look at your bank account. And a fly buzz out your bank account. Speak a million dollars into your bank account. See, this is what the this is what the elites, they don't want the average people to get on this 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 science of the way we as gods and goddesses think. There is nothing that a god or a goddess can do. There's nothing that we can't do. There's nothing that we can't say. There's nothing that we cannot speak into existence. And there's nothing that we cannot speak out of existence. You could speak a time period into existence. 1999. It's also 1999 all around you. See, this is one of the reasons why the Catholic Church had, had inaugurated the Inquisition. The Inquisition was put into place so you would no longer have access to the real money. You would not have access to to the real money. The real money is magic. The real magic is what the real money is magic. The real money is what they call sorcery. Ooh. Now some of y'all when I said the word sorcery, y'all the head under the bed. When I said the word sorcery, some of y'all jumped off the cliff. Some of y'all the head in the closet, right? But sorcery only means tapping into the source. What is the source? The source is the universe. The source is what the Muslims call Allah. The source is what the Jews call Yahweh. The source is what the Hindus call Brahma. The source. Right? But you have those who want to be gods over us. These politicians want to be gods over us. These individuals like a Dr. Fossey, the Bill, the Bill Gates, all of them want to be gods over us. So they step in the middle and block in the power. They give us a fake white Jesus and say that's our power, but there's no power in it. S 
they know once the people got get get hold of the real power, which is magic, which is Hekka, then they will be free. And that's the time that we're coming into, family. That's the time that we're coming into. We're coming into the, 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 the area of, of which power is to be placed in our hands. Who is to place this power in our hands? Those who are called the Anunnaki, the Elohim, the Neturu, to make us back into the Anunnaki, the Neturu, or the Elohim of this planet Earth. All the false leaders that we ever had, we got a journey to the real leader. So, politically speaking, I'm a theocrat. I'm, I, my, my whole thing is based on theocracy, based on God being the sole ruler. But he don't rule from the sky. He rules through us. In a, in a, in a, a world that is up under God's rule, it's going to be a world that's under righteousness. Right? But in order for us to get that, then we as Nubian Sufis, we can't just say, oh, only black people can get the divinity, right? Because that's going to leave a lot of people to be vehicles of these damn beasts, of these demons. So we want everybody, we want a whole planet of gods and goddesses. We want to see a whole planet of gods and goddesses. We want to see a whole planet that is the kingdom of of the Lord of Power or the Kingdom of God, a whole planet where everybody, we all are gods and goddesses, and so for us to all be gods and goddesses, then that means that the laws of Mayat are wrapped around this planet, and by the laws of Mayat wrapped around this planet, we are back in harmony with the six other planets of 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 of, of, the, of this yellow sun solar system that are active. We are. We are back in alignment with the number seven. And we won't have to get wiped out with the beast. So as we are raising our frequencies, as we raise our frequencies, we get anointed with the power of being Anunnaki again. We get anointed with the power of being Elohim again. We be anointed with the power of being Neturu or Aliha again. Of gods and goddesses. And our children. Will see a world. Of paradise. Our children will be growing up in a world. Where there is no wars. There is no more deaths. There is no more diseases. There is no more AIDS. There is no more cancer. There is not even any more guns. Why would we need guns for it. In a world that is a paradise. I'm not talking about. A, 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 a heaven. When we die. I'm talking about like the great. Like the great. Uh, our comrade. Khalid Abdul Muhammad said. We are talking about a heaven on the ground. While we still around. We ain't talking about a pie in the sky. When we die. We talking about a heaven on the ground. While we still around. We can make this whole planet. Into a global paradise. And we start to raise these frequencies up. Right. And we put power back into the hands of the people, right? Because it's still all power to the people, right? All power to the people. All power to all of the people, right? All power to all of the people. And I'm only going to say this one thing because it's a lot of controversy going on with our brother Kanye West, right? And the way the media was putting him out, making we all thought, man, he's crazy. He's crazy. He's doing some crazy stuff, right? But in the Native American tradition, there was this, there was a, there was a wizard, right? There was a shaman wizard called a Hayoka. And the the the, the science of the Hayoka. His job was to be the, the total contrary to the norms of the village. And he would be the contrary, like he would ride a horse backwards. That's what the Hayoka would do, the Hayoka Shaman Wizard would do. 
He would ride a horse backwards. He would do everything, wear his clothes backwards, do everything just to shock the consciousness of the, the average people that's walking in the village. Like, what? And that was so it could loosen them up from the inside so whatever sickness that was going to cling on to them would leave their bodies. That's what Hoyoka was doing. He was shocking people on consciousness. He was healing people by shocking them by doing weird things or opposite of, or, or things like that. He was a trickster. So we look at, uh, or say like in, uh, the trickster god in uh, uh, Elegba in, uh, in, in, in Yoruba, Nigeria. So Kanye West is moving like a trickster, but he had wisdom behind him. So when he sat down with Tucker on Fox and he spoke, I said, this man ain't crazy. He knows exactly what he's about. And he's speaking the truth, right? Mm. And the whole thing about the, the White Lives Matter t-shirt and whatnot, He's, in, he's disrespecting black people. He's not disrespecting black people because Black Lives Matter never represented black people. It represented a black face version of the LGBTQ movement. It was more of a mockery. Like, that's all it was. But, if, but whatever the statements he has said toward the European Jewish community, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a rabbi I'm going to be contacting and I'm going to ask him, would he, would he like to write this book with, with me? And it's called, There Is No Such Thing as Anti-Semitic. There's no such thing as anti-Semiticism. And the reason why there's no such thing is, is that to be a Jew is not a, is not a, is not a race, it's a religion. I'm a black Jew. Why? Because I'm, from the, I'm a black man who, who descended from the tribe of Yehuda. Through the Maasai tribe. I'm from the, and my people collectively, we are the original black Jews. Not by race, but by religion. Because Jew comes from the word Yehuda, and Yehuda is the name of the Lion tribe. But see, by those who are trying to use that as as an excuse to shut the mouth of people. That's like a like we look look at the corner store, the Arab corner store, and that's that's that the that this government, this U.S. government, puts put these corner stores up all over the country. And, and and root them directly in the black community. They don't they don't eat pork. This is against their Islamic religion to eat pork. They don't they don't they don't they don't, they don't drink alcohol because it's against their religious their religious uh to to sell to eat pork. And 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 they they don't gamble. All right, but they but what's forbidden to God for them. They make millions off of selling alcohol, pork, cigarettes, lotto tickets to black people. So they are so they are exploiting us, and then they send money to Turkey. They send money to to Arabia, Saudi Arabia, to Iran and Pakistan, and they send their money, black dollars, getting taken and sent overseas. And then they. Flirt with the flirt with the with the, the young girls. Get these young girls pregnant. Yeah, they get these young black girls pregnant. But you better not look at the Arab women. You better not even turn your head. So this is so. If I was to speak against the, them, all they would say is, "Oh, uh, he's against the Muslims. Oh, he's against Arab people. Oh, he's against Arab people, right?" But they wouldn't say they wouldn't call the Arab people Semitic people. If 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 the the, the the those who did some Muslim went overseas went and blew something up, hijacked the plane, first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna call their religion out. They can say Muslim terrorists. Right? Wouldn't even won't address the individual as an individual. Or Christians go out and do something. Christian Christian Reverend goes out and do something and uh he goes out and he messes with some little boys, right? First thing they're gonna say is these, the Christian reverend messed with a little boy, right? Or stole from the church, right? There's no, there's no outcry for identifying anybody faith, faith along with, with the wrong that they did. Yet, if European Jews are practicing usury, use, practicing uh, long shark technique, tech, 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 tactics, decades after decades, and, and into a lot of a lot of illegal business and you point them out then you're anti-semitic see that's see that's a way to shut the mouth of victims 
right? So it's never in a sense of saying that every Muslim is bad. Every every Christian is bad. Every Jew is bad, right? It's to point out the wrongdoers, but people like to hide behind a religion that's got money. People got money hide behind a hide, hide behind a religion when they got money. But there's no such thing as a Semite on the strength that the word uh, uh, Semitic is not a race, it's a language, right? And so the Arabic language is a Semitic language. If you speak, if you speak, in, if you know any Arabic names, Assalamu alaikum, whatever, that is Semitic. My name, my name, my, my, my Sufi name, Esau, Esau. Esau is Arabic, Arabic. So Esau is a Semitic is a Semitic name. So how could I be anti of what I, of my own name? No. So Hebrew is not the only Semitic language. Arabic came out of the Hebrew by extension of Aramaic. You know what I'm saying? So uh, if somebody say, we Semitic people, we go through a lip, stop lying. Semitic is a language, not a race of people. And if any of you of any races, whether you're white, black, Latino, if any of you say, well, I want to go practice Judaism right now. If you say you want to practice the Judaism that was practiced during the time of uh, Moses, not this Yiddish stuff, right? The ancient original stuff of 2,000 years ago, not this Yiddish conversion of Russians into the Hebrew, none of that. If any of you say, well, I'm going to practice Hebrew, and you start speaking it and you start doing the Sabbath, no matter what race you are, you can consider to be a Hebrew or a so-called Jew. No matter what race you are, that's because the Semitic language, the Hebrew language, is not, Semitic is not a race, it's a religion. And this is what they have done to get Farrakhan deplatformed. Uh, this is how they were able to go after uh uh, Professor Griff, this is how they was able to go after everybody because the ADL know 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 that they're wrong on calling people what they're not. The ADL don't want to explain that 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 there's no such thing as a Semitic people. There's no such thing as being anti-Semitic because this that because Semitic is a language and not a race. And the whole theme with what with 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 uh, the 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 whole thing about the um, trying to get trying to get the right idea trying to get the right word the whole thing about the um, aspect of talking about who's got as much money. It's the same thing where I say, well, the Catholic Church, they got the Vatican and they got a lot of secret treasures uh, going back to 2,000 years ago. You know what I'm saying? And the Muslims, they, get, they, they, they got most of the Middle East locked down. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they got the, they got the, the all of the mostly archaeological finds there. And then we say the, the, the European Jews, they got the banks, right? But but since you mentioned the European Jews, now you get called anti-Semitic. Instead of actual fact, when we mentioned the Christians into the Muslims, there was no issue. But when we mentioned them, it's like we can't mention them, right? And then the fact of the matter is, is that there were there there, there were Ethiopian Jews called the Falashas. And they were being discriminated against when they was trying to make it into Israel and it was told that they had to convert to Judaism, right? In order to become accepted into Israel. And Judaism really is only goes back less than a thousand, probably a good thousand to probably close, probably about over, over probably mm, a good 2,000 years only probably good top good, good top thousand years because the Romans came in, and the Romans had 
uh, destroyed the temple of Jerusalem. And so a lot of the original black Hebrews or what we call the what you would call black Jews fled from fled from uh, uh, what was known as Palestine at the time, fled or Judea. They fled and fled from all some some went into deep deep parts of Africa, others fled into Europe. And those who fled into Europe, they brought the Hebrew language with them. They brought the Aramaic Aramaic language with them, and they brought the Sabbath and all that with them. Before that time, there was no white people claiming to be Jews. There was no white people on the planet Earth claiming to be Hebrew. There was no white people on the planet Earth claiming to be Jews prior to the black Jews leaving and heading into Europe because they were fleeing from the Romans who were destroying everything. They destroyed the temple of of, 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 of Jerusalem in, in 70 AD. So these Hebrews were became uh, friends with the Russian pagan tribes. There was white Russian pagan tribes that were in uh, Europe at that time. And some of them was in the eastern part of Europe in, 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 in what is now Russia. And the kings, the, they was called the, the, the Akhenazis. They was the Khazars. And they did not, they were like, they didn't want to convert to the, they wanted to convert to something to become powerful and united. So they didn't want to go to the Christian. They didn't want to convert to Christianity. And they didn't want to convert to Islam, which was making its way uh, through the Arab conquest. So when they came across these original black Jews, or these blacks who was from the tribe of Yehuda, the lion, they are... Uh, and this is how the ancient world used to do things. And it was happening even in ancient Kemet with Pharaoh Ramses the, the second or the third married a Hittite princess. And that was bringing about the unity of nations. So a lot of times in the ancient times, in order to not war with the other nation, they would have a they would have a marriage and this king's prince, this king's daughter would marry this king's son and they merged the kingdoms so you had intermarriage and when it went on between the Akhenazis or the or the Khazars and the the black Hebrews and it was through that way that that the black Hebrews introduced them or converted them to what you know now is Judaism and the reason why it became known as Judaism because they 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 were still speaking a strong Ger Germanic language when they embraced uh, Hebrewism. So in the Yiddish language, the Yiddish has a combination of German words and Hebrew words, right? And then to make themselves into a separate people and not having all the stuff, they develop their um, Tamu and all their rites and rituals. So they went two thousand years as a separate religious group. The the blacks, a lot of them got absorbed. The black Hebrews got absorbed into the white. You know what I'm saying through the intermarriage and things of that nature, and not really having that. You know, any you know you dealing with all white all white Europe. So those 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 Khazars end up becoming the first European Jews, the first white Jews, and they carried on traditions uh, of the Hebrew people as if they themselves were in were, uh, were uh, came came from the the uh, Jerusalem. They they start to speak to the whole world as if they themselves came straight from Jerusalem when they never ever seen Jerusalem in their lives. No white, no white, no white Jews or no European Jews ever saw Jerusalem until the United States intervened uh, after the after World War II and gave them land which was never theirs in the first place. 
that land belonged to the, the descendants of those black Hebrews or those black Jews that, that introduced them to Judaism thousands of years earlier. And, and they decided to uh, get them a craft in, in the money, the money system, the banking system. They started to get into the banking and the money system, the European Jews. And they bought you. They bought Germany up. That's how powerful they were. So powerful they owned Germany, and that's what brought Hitler into the mix. And see, there's a science. Uh, this one European uh, uh, Jew who I'm gonna be speaking with. He was breaking down that too. How he was breaking down how they how they owned Germany, and and that was a, it, and, and and it was they was using like. A system where high interest rate debts and all that stuff, and that's how they was getting rich. And so it was a big thing that's going on that went on that, that brought about that situation. A lot of people, a lot of innocent people died during Hitler's time, but it was really the greed of the leaders uh, that kicked kicked a lot of stuff off. I'm not gonna go off into none of that, but I am gonna go off into the fact that. Uh, in order to prevent something like that from happening again, they came up, uh, the leaders after the United States came in, they came up with a clause and called it anti-Semiticism. Like I said, which it doesn't exist because that's not a, it's not a race, it's a language, right? So if somebody start, so by me saying that I'm a black Jew, and we knew getting Sufis are black Jews, meaning we are from we are blacks that are from the tribe of Yehuda. But if somebody start talking about us, or somebody start talking about the Hebrew Israelite brother, you know what I'm saying? Or somebody start talking about the Falashas, is is is, uh, uh, is anybody gonna you know, we gonna hear anti-Semiticism? Nope. And it's the same thing is because we're in a society that has white whitewashed history, where everybody thinks the Egyptians is the Egyptians, the original Egyptians is. Is Arabs or whites and not blacks. Right. So we dealing with where a, a society where there where basically if the black man if the black man says something if the black man says something that makes somebody mad instead of getting a whip that we got hundreds of years ago with with from the slave master, now they're whipping us by taking our money from us. So the man's a billionaire, and you want to punish him by making him half a billionaire, and then hope you can get the other billion. So what? Do you, so what is this world telling the black man who is really God? This world is saying, "Nigga, you better not say nothing. You say anything we want, we're gonna whip you." So basically, you're telling me. No matter how rich I am with your money, if I say something that you don't like, I could talk about anybody else doing wrong. I could talk about the Arabs doing wrong at the corner store. I could talk about these the Catholic priests mess with the little boys. But if I speak about those who doing wrong that belongs to your religion, not your race, but your religion, then I'm going to be called anti-Semitic. I'm going to be I'm going to be shamed in front of the the masses of the people. I'm gonna I'm gonna be whipped in the form of getting my income snatched from me. Then what you're telling me is that even if I was a billionaire, basically, this is what the world is saying to Kanye West. Even though you're a billionaire, nigga, you still a slave. Even though you're a billionaire, nigga, you still ain't free. And that is the reason why. This flag is holding up right here. This is why the UTBA flag is holding up right here. Because whatever we get up under this flag, no damn devil going to be able to take from us. Whatever thousands we get, whatever hundred stacks we get, whatever millions and billions we get, trillions of dollars we get, this is our own southern government. No beasts, no demons, no popes, no rabbis, no none, no none are going to be able to take nothing from this flag. Because we are our own sovereign government. 
we are on sovereign government, and that's and that's what I'm actually gonna be rolling up for in, in my politics is to get this solidified, not just nationwide, but also internationally that we are on sovereign government. So no, you're not gonna be going after our billionaires before we get a chance to get to our billionaires and, and get them to help us build our nations up. They're protected, as Professor Professor X said on X Clan, they're protected by the red, the black, and the green. So I'm gonna say what the hell I wanna say, right? Unless the First Amendment don't exist, unless the freedom of speech don't exist, unless the freedom of speech is a lie, unless the freedom of religion is a lie, right? Unless the freedom of press is a lie. Well, you got people that got the LGBTQ flag up, right? They got their flag up, right? Hmm. They making their money up under their flag. You can't even take nothing from them. And this is what we'll tell somebody like Kanye West: come be up under, come be up under this flag, Kanye. Come up under the UTBA flag, Kanye, and help me pay for this paperwork. That's gonna protect your assets. Make your assets international assets, right? The time for false gods, the time for false governments, false freedom, false money, the time for false accusations have to come to an end because this is the last days, but not our last days. This is the last days of the beast. This is the last days of the beast. And anybody that's siding with the beast, anybody that's down with the beast, right? This is the time that the gods take the planet back, right? I say this is the time where the gods take the planet back, right? And it's only going to be taken back because we are powered by the Lord of power as being lords of power, right? It starts off with that journey. Even, you have to, even if you have to walk by your damn self to get to the Lord of power. But once you get to the Lord of power and you become the Lord of power, ain't nothing going to be around you but all power. That's all power to the people. And that's what my people have been missing. That's what all people around the world has been missing is that power, right? Hmm. And that's our journey to give power back to the people. And for those who want to back this Ghetto Rise of the Black Messiah tour, Step in right now. If y'all want to back the movies that we got, step in now. Going back to the, the whole thing, and I want to break down what this guy said about the, about the Jewish community that we can all learn a lesson from, right? And put their money together. If there's a brother, that's, a cousin that's trying to start a business, Give him the money to start his business. That's what this man said. And I said, you know what? I got a lot of respect for what he said. I got a lot of respect for what this man said because he's, that's the way he broke it down. If you got people in your community that is trying to start businesses, give them the money. I want to see if I can find him when he said that. Oh, and I, I, don't, I don't got the exact one. Well, yeah, yeah, hold on. I got it. I got it. Hold up. Like I said, the man, he made a lot of sense because I was trying to find who he was. But, I mean, when we are coming together, if any community is coming together with their finances, that's when the Lord of Power can do. That's when the Lord of Power can do the most miracles through us. 
So I'm going to see if I can find this gentleman. I'm going to play it if I can find it. If I can't, I ain't going to worry about it. I thought I had it. Wait a minute, let me see. I may got it. Yeah. So this, this is what this guy, what he has said, right? So it wasn't nothing that Kanye West was saying bad. He was actually saying what was stated and man broke it down. He broke it down on the whole theme about putting your money together in your community. You see people trying to start businesses. It shouldn't be all these black people here in St. Louis, Missouri, knowing that knowing what I've been trying to do in their businesses and they and they ain't come with their money to the table. We could have been had this movie out. We could have been had this movie out family in here in St. Louis, this black guy from St. Louis, and we could have forty million dollars. We could have been re raking, raking in right now. So I like the way he was breaking down this. So I'm gonna let this run a little bit, then we gonna go ahead. And shut it down, right? So check out what he says. I don't think it's accurate to compare journalism when the world says that Jews are good at business or that we Here, check this out, check this out, check this out. I don't think it's anti Semitism when the world says that Jews are good at business or that we I don't think it's anti Semitism when people say that Jewish people are good at business or that we control certain industries. To be honest with you, but kind of take it as a compliment and if the whole world is saying it then it must be true so instead of screaming from the rooftops anti-semitism what i would like to do with you right here and right now i would like to teach you one major jewish business secret a principle that will not only change your life but will change the lives of everybody around you and of your entire community whichever community that you come from so buckle up watch the rest of this video it's going to bring a lot of success god willing to you your community and everybody around you so let's hop in so one incredible Jewish business secret is the idea of community itself okay so here's how the world usually works so you have people that are alone right you graduate from school and you try to go into the workforce you open up a business and you don't have anybody that's really vouching for you. So you're like a single individual trying to provide products and services to this world that in itself is distrustful and that's on the good end. On the bad end, you grew up in a community that when you are trying to do things and trying to be successful, the community is actually working against you. They don't want to see you succeed. They don't want to see you do better than them. And they don't want to see you move forward. And that's the way that most people in the world, friends have told me that that's how they've grown up and that's been their experience in business. So the Jewish community is very different. It's stopping for no reason. Hold up. Hold up, family. I don't know what's up with this daggone thing. Is acting, acting sluggish. All of a sudden, you want to act sluggish when we... We got a uh, sluggishness in the sluggishness going on here. Now 
all I say, it don't want me to get all the words out to y'all because it, it, it's, some, it's some fire. Now, you heard what he said. You should love the person so much that you want other people in your community to do well. So that's number one. Number two, you want to be the people in your community, you see them every single day. You see them as you're dropping your kids off at school. You're praying. Well, you see the people around you succeed. Number three, when the people in your community are doing well, and they are able to give charity. They're able to give back to the community. We want people in our synagogues and our schools, we want them to do well because when people are making money, that means that they could give money back to our community. So we want to help the people in our community because it just becomes a whole snowball effect. And number four, one of the main reasons why we do business with each other is because there's a trust factor. We know that when we do business with each other, if we have a problem, go to our rabbi and he's going to help us solve it or if we don't have a rabbi involved we could go to a friend that we know knows the both of us so there's a certain element of trust when you're dealing with people in your community that allows you to build business and to build trust a lot faster than if you're just coming as a stranger so the advantage to working with your own community is you could break into markets much faster than if you are trying to convince strangers to work with you because there's there's all that goodwill that exists between you guys. So now you might be asking, practically speaking, how can you implement this in your neighborhood, in your faith, in your religion, in your culture, in your color, in your creed? How could you start to be start to do this in your community? And I'm going to tell you exactly how. Number one is you know the expression buy local, right? You see this in supermarkets, you see this in towns all the time. Buy locally from the people that are living in your community. That means if you are a Hindu and you need to paint your house and there is a Hindu company down the street, use them. Work with your own kind. Buy local. FUBU was really good at this, by the way. For us, buy us. He created something that was brilliant. Uh, number two. Let's say one of your cousins needs a loan for a business to start it. Give him the loan. Help the people around you. Don't watch them fall. But you want to help the people around you stand up. Number three, be happy for each other when each other succeeds. In Yiddish, the word is fargin. When you see your neighbor, your cousin, your uncle, your brother, when you see your friend, your schoolmate, when you see them doing well, enjoy that success happy for them because if you hate them if you hate their success you will never be successful on your own because whatever it is that you hate you're going to stay away from be happy for the people in your community when they start succeeding number four ask the people in your now i got that already posted that's what i'm talking about that's what the utba is talking about and that's all what that's all kanye even though he may have been angry when he said it but that's the fact you know, that's the only way that any people, any community, whereas the black community, Latino community, the Latino community don't need any lessons on this. Because when I was in L.A., they had it. They they, they was working in, in such a great harmony. You know what I'm saying? That whole, whole, whole stores all up and down uh, San Fernando Valley. So, I mean, it's that unity, right? It's that unity, and this is the this is on, and that's just on a naturalistic level. Imagine the unity that God uses, the unity the, the unity that God as being one, yet has these many forces that 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 He utilizes to bring about creation, to bring about per, uh, 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 um, uh, Salvation to bring about even destruction if needed, and then recreation, the the unity of us doing the same thing as a people, right? To be divine, divinely united, right? All this individualism stuff that don't work. I don't need no help. But then you stuck on the side of the road. And you got a phone. You ain't got no contacts in your phone to call. You can't call nobody to come help you. Right, so the unity. So when I when I say, hey, and my brother, uh, I'm 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 starting this store, you know, 
I'm starting this record label up. I'm starting this film company up. Could you be a sponsor? Could you be an investor? Oh, no, I'm good, man. I'm good. How is you good and I'm not good? And that's all he was saying. Right? And so I understand that I'm going to get some, I'm going to run across some scatterbrains and I'm not going to make myself sad and mad because, you know, I got my, there are people that's not thinking on the lines of what he just mentioned. He said, this is the reason why the Jewish community is so wealthy because they, they pull in their resources. A man trying to start his business, they come out of their pocket and they give the money so the man can open up his business. Right? Or the, the, the sister could be trying to open up her, her barbershop. They'll say, oh, I mean, uh, beauty, beauty salon. Like, I hope that, I hope, I hope her stuff don't work out. I hope it fails. I hope it gets shut down. The mentality of black people, of regular black people is that mentality. Right? F that E. Yeah, that's what it does. Ain't what they say F him for, man. F him, man. That's, that, that shit ain't going nowhere. That movie ain't going nowhere. That two ain't going nowhere. He just talking stuff. F him. Man, why you say F me for? You know what I'm saying? And that's the mentality that's keeping us down. Right? But see, I understand it's going to be people like that that I'm going to come across. So we got the UTBA. So we could bring people in that, that, that don't got that mentality. So like I said, I'm going to be contacting old boy about that book uh, that I want to write because we need to put that book out so we could smash, smash, uh, smash the monopoly. Is it basically going to smash the monopoly? Because all the slanders, that's just that's just a way that the Matrix is putting stuff in there so we won't be able to 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 point out what is unfair or the limitedness that we're being limited on. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, there's, there's, lot, there's, lot, there's a lot more to go with this Lord, go to the Lord of Power. And I understand and I know now the more that we build foundations, we're going to be getting off into more of this divine science, more of this alchemy. You know what I'm saying? We'll be able to build more. We'll be able to establish universities. We'll be able to establish temples, communities, and everything. We'll be able to build on more because this science is infinite. I can't even give it all to you in one sermon. Some people are like, man, he done went five hours because the, 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 the Nunaki be having more to speak through me. Right, but I have to tell them like, look, I need to get some sleep. I need to get some rest. I need to get back on my work. If 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 I let the new Naki speak through me, you know, saying nonstop, I'd be like this. I'll be speaking all the way into the, into the break of dawn, right? And this is why, this is why we we are on this level to do what we do, so it could be, who knows. A thousand brothers and speak, a thousand brothers and sisters around the world speaking what I'm speaking and getting this knowledge out to the people because all the knowledge is based on us to to build New Jerusalem, right? To build the King Dome of God. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna shut it down, family. I love you all. Heck, hotel.